BET Online. Woo! Exciting. Really big Edison tournament. There's still another 40 minutes for signups. I'm going live a little bit early to make sure people know that they can sign up if they haven't already. You can still sign up. You can still sign up. What's up, duelists? What's up, duelists? Hold up, just tweeting out that I am live. 40 minutes left to sign up for RBT Online. Live now on my YouTube. Link in bio. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Hell yeah. Awesome, welcome in. What's up, duelists? All right, I'm gonna share the stream to the Discord too so the people know. The people know. We're gonna do a little bit of a pre preamble. We rarely do a preamble before this. I usually go live like as it's starting, but. Here we are. Today we're a little bit early. We're awake. We're vibing. Everything is everything is golden. Everything is you know, the vibes. Hold up, just posting real quick. Post gang. These are our predictions from yesterday's tailgate stream, by the way. Uh not necessarily predictions. These eight decks up here are or eight cards representing eight decks up here are decks that have won major tournaments this year and these six decks down here are decks that we predicted could also do well and by we i mean i obviously um hold it so far we have about 130 entrants i think there's gonna be a lot more in the last 40 minutes though here we got the bracket so far. We can we can take a look at who's in it. 131. Okay, yeah, people are are getting their signups in. I expect this to be a more chill RBT. I'm expecting like 150 to 180 players. There's a YCS today, so there's a little bit of uh, event overlap. I believe today is YCS in Europe, so a lot of the European players are probably at the event, playing in the Ultimate Time Wizard events there. But we'll still get a pretty sizable turnout. It'll still be you know the biggest online tournament around you know the vibes let's take a look at some of the players are we going to stream some matches yes when the tournament starts so the tournament begins in 40 minutes i should do that like tournament countdown and i should also get let me let me type this hold up tournament begins 10 a.m pst signups close 9 50 a.m pst there we go Hopefully that that helps people. Cool. That'll be a commonly asked question. And also, if you aren't already subscribed, do that right now. Cool, cool, cool. So, yes, we are going to stream the matches. We're going to stream the entire tournament. Obviously, that's the whole reason that we are live today. Let's take a look at the bracket, though. Let's take a look at some of the people who have entered already. The bracket is still being updated because signups are still open. Um, but there are, there are a good amount of players so far. 133 players, you can see. Players are trickling in here towards the end. We've got Hydro Pump, uh, Diego, he's topped in the past. 10FD, previous RBET winner. we got Fancy Diesel, he's topped in the past. We've got a lot of really powerful players. Kage Pai, I've seen him before. The Pokey Rapper, I've seen him before. Uh, Spiral, very powerful player. Furman Supreme, 8-Man, Chill Phil, he topped the... Um, Chillfill topped the, I lost my train of Kitten Hater says, is it illegal to play on alts? You saw some accusations in the discord. Usually when someone is playing on an alt, they are hiding the fact that they are a banned cheater. So yes, it is illegal to play on alts because I don't want people to like cheat and then come in on an alt, <laughs> obviously. Uh, Callum, powerful player. We got some cool, good players. El Pinguo, he was, a uh, one of the very first Vayu Turbo players. I think he innovated the Vayu Turbo deck in 2010. Insidious, powerful fairy player. Silchus Rune, you guys know Silchus Rune, of course. If you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you've been, you know Silchus Rune. Tommy Dang, he's the winner of the recent PS5 tournament with fairies. We got a lot of strong players in here. Alex Deman, strong European player. Um, Izzy, 
He recently topped the RB team, Moreno Valley. Very, very strong player. Raunuk, of course. Of course, Raunuk, you know. So, Pana recently topped Deck Devastators. Carpath recently won that tournament in Pittsburgh. Ludovico, probably one of the strongest European players, if not the strongest European player. Very highly rated Edison player across multiple tournaments, has topped multiple events. Fen, Bluff, Knock, Advanced, Gaibu, Advanced. Got a lot, we got a lot of strong players. Snack recently winning the, I believe it was the European online tournament with Vayu Turbo, so lot of strong players a lot of strong players in this event it's going to be very saturated with talent are there any glad beasts well we don't know signups are still open signups are still open if you guys want to play in the tournament it's free to enter um signups close in about 37 minutes so we don't know yet what's up hj these were our predictions these are decks that have won up here they these have won major tournaments this year and these six decks down here are decks we predicted could top as well but these are decks that have not won major events this year is seeding completely random given that it is swiss yes the seeding will be random it will be randomized because what's the, there's no there's no difference in swiss brackets if it was double elimination it would be seeded based off of previous tournament performance but because it's single uh, because it's swiss the seeding will be random uh what's up duelists welcome in today is rbt if you guys want to donate to the prize pool there's a donation link in the description below which is these tournaments are crowdfunded the online ones are crowdfunded i will be personally donating some money to the prize pool as well we've already received one donation thus far to the prize pool it's going to be a really fun broadcast if you're watching the vod i know a lot of people watch these vods back you can go ahead and skip forward to the matches. We're going to be here for another 35 or so minutes until the matches start. How many rounds of Swiss are there going to be? We don't know that until the bracket is finalized. Depends on the number of entrants. If we have about 200 entrants, I believe it'll be eight rounds of Swiss. So I'm predicting a little under 200 entrants. We might have a little over that. But roughly, these tournaments are usually about 200 players. So that's how many rounds it should be. And then the top cut will take place tomorrow. Turns out there's an ultimate time wizard event at YCS Dortmund as well. So there's a lot of overlap today. That's why I'm predicting a little bit smaller of a turnout on average. Kirik says it's already at 8. We need 100 plus more for 9, so it's probably staying at 8. Okay, there you go. It's probably 8 rounds of Swiss, most likely. You came across a dino assault mode deck. How do people cook this up? Uh, usually by just like going in a deep dive in the carpool, usually, I think the Dino Assault Mode deck is a bit of a meme, but it, it has some, it has some, you know, if you can summon Stardust Assault Mode, like obviously that card is good. So it's not bad. Could be worse. These were kind of our predictions. I think these are going to be the big 14 decks we expect to see today. We might see some alternative things dark gaia is something that we usually see a little bit of rescue cat decks we might see a little bit of those they've been kind of popular flamvel decks they've been kind of popular one of them recently uh, got top four at a 1k so i expect to see maybe a few of these three decks uh do i play pokemon go no but i play the pokemon trading card game what's up owen how you doing welcome into the stream Welcome into the stream, everybody. Today is RBET, which stands for Really Big Edison Tournaments. Usually we get a bingo card going. Usually we get a bunch of matches going. Let's talk a little bit about some of the players who are entered today while we're refreshing the bracket. Oh, God, I hope this isn't a real thing. Oh, God, not today. Not like this. Not like this. Your challenge is killing me. Please, not like this. Not like this. No love for Lightsworn or Christia Sworn? Oh yeah, we'll probably see some Lightsworn. I don't think that deck is very good. I think it's like a worse version of the other fairy decks. But we'll probably see it. Okay, thank god. 
Okay, we got 136 entrants. Entry is still open, so there's going to be more players trickling in. We'll probably have somewhere between 150 and 200 players today. Hopefully, challenge cooperates. I agree, James Arnold. I certainly hope. Let's talk a little bit about some of these players. Hydro Pump, he invented Dragon Turbo. That deck's been doing really well. I believe Ghost Rider is also entered. Let's see if he is. He is. Ghost Rider is the previous RBET winner. He won with Dragon Turbo. So we got two very powerful Dragon Turbo players. Uh, we got Aleph Yeah. He topped with a really cool Chaos deck, I believe, last season. Might have been this season. I don't fully remember. Uh, Carpath, really powerful duelist. We got a bit of a bracket update here as well. The bracket slowly being updated um, as more and more people sign up. Snack recently won a European tournament um, a couple weekends ago. Fen, powerful duelist. A lot of powerful duelists. Duck Tracy, I've seen his name around. I believe he has an RBET top already. That is a lot of players. Yeah, we should have between 150 and 200. The signups are not signups are not closed yet. You can enter if you're if you're just joining us and you're finding out about this right now. You can enter the really big Yu-Gi-Oh Discord in the description below, and you can sign up there for free. It's free to sign up. Make sure you read the rules, read the tournament rules and stuff. But if you want to play in this tournament, signups are still open until 9:50 a.m. PST. So you have another 30 minutes to build a deck and sign up if you want to. Edison is popping off. Yes, it certainly is. It's by far and above the biggest alt format of Yu-Gi-Oh currently. Uh, I think. Unless you count Master Duel as an alt format, which I kind of do. Edison cards is a common thing House of Champs talks about now. Yeah, it's kind of weird um, that he talks about it, but is always like... Is always like... <laughs> why is this card so expensive? It's like, bro, you know why. It's because of your boy. It's because of me. It's because of me, House of Champs. Give a little credit, brother. Give a little credit. Uh, god damn fame man says why build when you could just net deck also true you could just net deck me and do well that's my decks are usually at least the ones i bring to tournaments are usually pretty good uh i think my dragon list is really good and i think my fairy list is generally speaking pretty good if you copy those can't go wrong my quick draw list is pretty good too uh it's pretty standard it's not like anything special these are the decks i expect to see today these like 20 or so how many decks is this what is this eight up here Nine down here, ten down here, like eighteen decks. Are there any other decks we expect to see? Probably. We could see Chain Burn. I know it's had some I know it's had some success recently in like smaller PS5 tournaments. Coderis, I don't expect to see Coderis, sadly. Coderis is not not among us today. I don't I don't think anyone will be bringing it. Spencer's deck. Uh we probably won't see that pass round two realistically oh gemini yeah 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 gemini is the deck i expect to see yeah yeah, yeah. good call versa good call yeah gemini is definitely a deck i expect to see machina yeah that's another deck we could see we could see machina for sure what's cool is that all of these decks are roughly viable i think the most viable decks are probably like they are ordered i'd say these are probably ordered a salvo deck probably not Salvo's really bad. If we were to see it, it'd be probably like that Jinzo list. You changed the numbers in your Discord since signing up. Should I reapply or does it not matter? Why would you change the numbers in your Discord since signing up to the tournament? i just resubmit your deck, Big Z, to make sure that there's no issues. But there shouldn't be any issues. Um, let's see how many players we got now. Players are going to sign up a ton at the last minute. Usually they do within the last 30 minutes. As you can see here, 142 players. Yeah, it's picking up. It's picking up. If you guys want to si sign up, uh, feel free to do that. It's in the really big Yu-Gi-Oh! Discord. And if you're watching the VOD, go ahead and skip forward to the gameplay. Enraged Peacock, Powerful Duelist. Apropos, I believe he's topped some stuff before. Cold Madness is a name I recognize. I recognize a lot of these names. Maybe it's just because I'm terminally online. Let's see. Who have we got? 
Wait, this guy should not be in the. This guy should be banned. Hold up, 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 hold up. Yeah, this player should be banned. Oh my god. Dealing with fucking... Banning people is super annoying. Where the fuck is that? Nine twenty six three eleven PM. What the fuck? Hold up. We got a ban a dude who's using an alt. He's getting exposed. Yeah, he's a known cheater. We don't really fuck with that here, so That's what happens. You get banned. How do I ban this motherfucker? How do you ban someone on Discord? So annoying. You gotta like find them on the sidebar. If they haven't posted a message, how do you ban someone? Does anyone know this? God damn. It's so frustrating. You know, it's, it's fucking frustrating is what it is. Uh, how, do, how do I do this? Right click. And there we go. Okay, done. Nice. Ain't none of that shit today. Cool, cool, cool. My bad, guys. My bad, my bad, my B. My B. What's the story? I don't know. Just some player who has brain rot and was like cheating people. And then just signed up for a bunch of alts, which we don't allow, obviously. Looks like he has been, hopefully, let's see if he. Yep, he's been removed from the bracket and banned. There you go. Jonah says, See, it says I'm signed up since last night, but you're not in the challenge. Huh. What's your what's your username on the challenge? What's your Discord name, Jonah? You should, you should at Sevilla. Sevilla has the ability, I believe, to manually add people. I think we all do, actually. But if you're not, if you're not in the challenge bracket, we can manually add you. Bingo card is in my DMs. Fuck yeah, let's go. God, I love Ryanite. Ryanite's my goat. Uh, let me grab this bingo card. All right, for everyone who wants to play bingo along with me, create your bus custom bustum. Custom bingo card, live here. Oh, 250 likes. That's the center space. Everybody liked the stream. We got a lot of cool ones on here. Duplock survives for two plus turns. Okay. Past RBET or DDV winner loses a match. Pog champ. Damage step colluder honest for lethal. Player leaves Discord without reporting loss. I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> Simo MBT or Nim Nim types in the stream chat. Okay. Okay. Hype. Hype from the big creators. Kai is burned for lethal, teammate versus teammate, five-headed dragon, all five spell and trap, occupy, tribute summon, or set gores. Oh, I love all these. These are fire. Except the player leaves without reporting loss. I hope that doesn't happen. Keegan accidental zoom. Okay. Okay. All five monster zones. We got judge call and or ruling dispute. That should be a free space too, but we'll see if it's, it has to happen on camera. It has to happen on camera. Red dragon archfiend. Ooh, that's a good one. I feel like not enough people summon Red Dragon Archfiend, so it'd be really cool to see one. Player insta-leaves after game. The salty loss. The salty quit out. No GGs. 
Blackwing Mirror, Starlight Road. Okay, Deck Devastation Virus Resolves. Armory Colossal OTK, that'd be kind of fire. I don't think we've seen one of those in a minute. Pro Heavy, okay. There's some good ones on here. There's some rare ones. I feel like Frog Mirror Match, Blackwing Mirror Match might be more common. Uh, Keegan Accidental Zooms, that can happen, you know. It's, it's an accident, you know. I don't mean to do it, but... All right, let's see. People are trickling in. We got 148 players. Like I said, I estimate somewhere between 150 and 200 players for today. Uh, there is a YCS and an Ultimate Edison Time Wizard also on the same day. So expecting a little bit lower turnout than usual. Um, but we should still have a good number of players, especially a lot of the terminally on players, online players or the people who... Um, uh, players who don't, who can't travel to Dortmund, basically. Jonah, if you're still in the stream, I believe that you got, you got added, so double check that. We've got our head judge, Angle, in the building. We've got our other judges, Hoff and Asian with Hat and Sevilla, all on deck. So, that's what's up. That's where we at. That's where we at. If you guys want to play bingo along with me, thank you to Ryan and I for creating these bingo cards. He goes above and beyond for community stuff like this. Really cool dude. Wish you could play, but you can't commit the hours. How long does the RBET last? Usually all day. Usually it's eight rounds, and the rounds are 45 minutes rounds. So it's like... Estimate about 50 minutes per round, just for five minutes in between times. So if you have 50 minutes per round and eight rounds, it's like six and a half hours, day one. And then the next day is like a uh, top cut, usually. You want to find a way to make a big IRL bingo card for Orlando? I can message around some people and see if there's like a print shop nearby or something. These are the decks we expect to see, probably roughly in this order. I expect to see, well, maybe Chaos Fairies I don't expect to see as much as some of these other decks, but these are the decks up here. These eight decks are decks that have won the major tournaments this year thus far. So there's been eight different decks to win major tournaments this year, probably nine if I'm forgetting one, but eight different decks that have won major tournaments this year so far. And then these decks down here have won like pseudo majors, like regional tournaments, like uh, Diva Hero has won some PS5 tournaments. Fairies has won some PS5 tournaments. Amaryllis has won a PS5 tournament. Uh, Quick Draw, Hero Beat, they have done well at PS5 tournaments. Do I also commentate solo? I think as the players will drop, we will get some players on commentary today, Cat. Gladiator Beast won something? No, but it topped a 90 player regional. So. Fabian says, have I seen the Hamster, Raikou, Caius, Red Med deck? Yeah, that's the deck up here that won Deck Devastation Virus. Um, or not Deck Devastation Virus. Deck Devastators Tournament. Uh, Fitz won Deck Devastators with a Hamster, Raikou, Dragon deck. I think adding Caius is bad. I also think Hamster and Raikou are bad. But my experience with Dragons is like different from other people's experience with Dragons. Norlaris EU Champs. Yeah, Norlaris won the EU Champs. That's why it's up there. Uh... So yeah, Pog Champ. People are rolling in. People are trickling in. People are are pulling up. People are signing up. You guys can still sign up. You have 19 minutes left before the signups close. If you want to play in this event, I've heard that the Ultimate Time Wizard event in Dortmund is going very well, and everyone is super excited for it, so that's a good vibe, too. Amaryllis Burn? Yeah, Amaryllis Burn has been secretly performing very well. Like, top four at Nats, which was the biggest event this year, and then it won a PS5 tournament recently. It topped an RBET last year, but I think the build was unperfected. We're at 151 players now, probably a bit more now. As people are rolling in, people are trickling in. Like I said, I expect somewhere between 150, 200 players for this event. 
uh, because there is an Ultimate Time Wizard event also on the same day. If there was nothing happening this weekend, I think this would have been the biggest RBET yet. But we now have multiple Edison events per weekend, which is amazing. That makes me very happy, especially when there's paper events happening. All in asked, do I have a favorite Edison deck to play? Yeah, um, my favorite decks are Quick Draw and Black Wings and Fairies and dragons and zombies and gladiator beasts and rescue cat and i like gemini and i like machina and i also like diva hero and i like chain burn and i also really like flamvel and i like amaryllis and i really like to play frogs and sometimes i play uh dragon turbo and norlaris those are my favorite edison decks i also oh stun yeah, Stun is another one of my favorite Edison decks. I really like Stun. I like Teledad. I like... <laughs> I like... Yeah. I I think those are my favorite decks. Oh, I also really like Evil Hero Dark Gaia. I think it's more apt to ask me which decks I don't like. Because I think there's only two decks I don't enjoy playing. One of them is Vayu Turbo. I think the deck's fucking boring as shit. And the other one is Hero Beat. I don't think Hero Beat is that boring, but I feel like it's underpowered, so it's not very fun for me. Yes, we've got a bingo here. 250 likes on the stream is the free space, but we do have to hit that. You know, you do have to like the stream. You do have to post in the chat and increase my engagement. All right, about 15 minutes left in the signups. Do we have any predictions? What do you guys think is going to win? I do like Chainburn. What do you mean? <laughs> Chainburn is super fun, Carpath. You never activated a chain link six or higher. It's so fun. It's so fun. Have you ever, you've never played chamber and have you Carpath? You're winning this thing. You could Ryan. Nine. You've been kind of like slept on. A lot of people are sleeping on the power of Ryan. Nine. How many more glad beast videos are the top gun? Am I, am I going to title the last one? Uh, the last Gladiator Beast video I uploaded was the last Gladiator Beast video I'll ever, I'll ever upload. So, I'm sorry to Glad Beast enjoyers everywhere, but I'm no longer, I'm, I've sworn a blood oath, I cannot play that deck ever again. Uh, it's against my religion. Welcome in, everybody. Welcome in. Looks like we're doing some cool things. Looks like we're doing some cool things. Edison format hype. Is Fraser Smith in the tourney? Probably not. I don't think he's playing because he's playing next weekend in Orlando, which I should plug, by the way. <laughs> hold, everyone. Hold, everyone. Ho hold. Hold. I believe this is something we have to talk about. Next weekend is RBET Orlando, and it is almost sold out. It is very, very close to sold out. I believe there's only... 10 or 20 slots left in the entire tournament. Shonen Jump Dark End Prize, Custom Mats, The Works. It is going to be the biggest Edison event of the year, next to maybe Nats. You don't want to miss out on this um, once-in-a-lifetime tournament. So come through. It's going to be super, super hype. The production, I've seen a little bit behind the scenes of the production. It's going to be a, a step up from what you're used to on this channel. It's going to be a level above it's gonna be like a very professionally ran event carpath says wish i could go to orlando why can't you carpath tell me your reason right now i'm looking to sponsor a couple players i was gonna sponsor some of the socal players but what is the issue carpath why can't you go to orlando life oh that is not a shut the fuck up shut the fuck up carpath not what do you mean life what do you mean life yeah, come on, man. Come on. DM me about it. DM me about it. We'll get it sorted. 
you gotta come to Orlando, man. You gotta come. Edison is life. Yep, there you go. Everyone in the chat gets it. You got 80 years to live life. There's only one RBET Orlando. That's facts. That's facts. There's only one RBET Orlando. Carvat, you gotta come through. Dude, Carvat's the realist. He goes to all the Edison events. He recently won an Edison event with King of the Beasts. Yeah, Challenge is being a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, program currently. Oh, sigh. That's tough. Challenge crashed last weekend, I believe, or weekend before for Deep DV. So I expect it to potentially crash this weekend as well. We have some backups happening, but if it does crash, I apologize to the players. There's only so much I can do. What's up, Baron? What's up, Lubcho? How are you doing, guys? What's up, Crude Human? Crude Human, what are you asking? Like, that question doesn't make sense to me. Uh, ask one of the mods in the Discord. I'm currently live, so... If you have issues joining, then... Um, then message one of the mods in the Discord and they can get it sorted out. Wish you could come to an RBT. I'm going to try to get one in Europe. You're in Europe, right, Baron? Um, I'm going to try to get one in Europe next year, but... It's tough, man. There's a lot of issues. <laughs> There's a lot of issues for me getting there and all the other stuff so we'll figure it out how much time is each round people are asking bro people just don't want to read the announcements they just don't want to read them they just don't want to read them. They just don't. They just don't want to read them. People don't want to read the rules. They don't want to read the announcements. They don't want to read Yu-Gi-Oh players. You know what I'm saying? Yu-Gi-Oh players. You wish you could attend Orlando, but it's out of your funds and resources. It's okay. Um, it's a once in a lifetime event, but I'm sure I'll do another one at some point. Uh, at least you're here for the stream, right? At least you can be a part of the the movement in that sense what are we cutting to today i whatever we cut to last time we did swiss so whatever it was in the last rbet i'll have to check that they hosted one in bordeaux and you think it's getting more popular that's hype dude i'd love to go to france that'd be sick i don't know if we could do one in france it'd probably have to be in germany because of the central location just the player base in germany is huge kansas city or chicago would be incredible i've been trying to do chicago for a while but the venues have been like working with her not being cooperative spencer says you're trying to enter but it says it's not responding bro waited till the last nine minutes to enter <laughs> you really waited till the last nine minutes to enter also spencer if you ever text me something that's answered in the announcements or the rules ever again i'm blocking your number by the way <laughs> If you ever text me a question that is answered on the Discord, I swear to God, I will block your number. <laughs> do it in Chicago and you got me on a bottle. Oh, no, nah, I kind of got to do it, you know? All right. If anyone wants to play bingo alongside us for the stream, there's only uh, nine more minutes left to sign up for this tournament. And this is a bingo card courtesy of Ryanite, who designs these bingo cards for the stream. One of the coolest community members out there. Spencer says, why would I read when I have your number? You about to not have my number. I'm about to block you. Learn how to read, bro. All right. What are we doing? Are there any deck I recommend to play or get into? Yes. I have videos on my channel about uh, decks I recommend to beginners. So go to my channel and search the videos and watch a bunch of them and just pick something you like. That's what I recommend. You're hoping for Amaryllis or Zombies to win? That'd be cool. I, I think it'd be pretty hyped to see Amaryllis win a big event. I think it is definitely powerful enough to win a big event. It is one of the most powerful decks in the format. Yeah, no problem, Obi Kills. Thanks for tuning into the stream. 
Hope you enjoy the tournament if this is your first time here. Uh, and we are about to get underway very shortly. So the tournament begins at 10 a.m. Signups close in eight minutes, but we'll have a finalized bracket and we can kind of decide who it is we want to cover. If that makes sense. I have lost all trains of thought. We have seven minutes. First Eds are already $75 for Amaryllis. Wow. I have a set. Does anyone want them? <laughs> I'll give you a discount. Hit me up on Twitter if you want a set of first edition Amaryllis. Spencer says, are you supposed to be on the bracket? Yeah, it should use your Discord name on the bracket. If you're signed up. Looks like we have 160 players. Nice. Not bad. Not a bad turnout, considering there's an Ultimate Time Wizard event today as well. Ooh, Ray Coco joined. He's another powerful duelist too. Dr. Maple, happy to see him. I wonder if there's any relation to Mr. Maple. Celia Bot, winner of RBT Moreno Valley. Don't copy powerful GOAT format duelist. Really, really stacked tournament. Trap Money's most fire username of all time. Hmm. A lot of tournament winners in here. Shamu, I believe he's either one or topped in RBET before. Roger Smith. Striker, thank you for the gifties. All of that, all of your gifties, all of your subs, all of your donations today are going directly to the RBET prize pool. And for those of you who got a free membership, enjoy the members only content. Once a week, I post a members only video. It's $2.99 a month. You get extra stuff. Spencer, you should hit up Sevilla, the mod. Stop asking me fucking questions while I'm live. <laughs> I'm obviously busy. <laughs> uh, God damn it. <laughs> God damn it, Spencer. I'm being a dick to Spencer, but I know him. So if you're watching this and you're like, oh, he's a, he's a mean guy. That Keegan guy's a mean guy. No, I know Spencer, IRL. He's just being, a, he's being intentionally dense. <laughs> you hope plants win. Mark of the Rose is goaded. Mark of the Rose is an insanely cool card. I believe the ultimate rares are quite expensive, quite pricey. Thank you for the gifty striker. You're out here supporting the community. Oh yeah, of course. Enraged Peacock makes a good point. You do get access to the special emotes as well. Spencer says, it's okay. This is my boy. It's it's not okay. It's not okay, Spencer. I will I will ban you and block you on all platforms. Carpat says, I predict I will scrub out. Can never seem to perform two events in a row. It's tough. It's tough out here. But we'll see. We'll see. Did you enter with something good or did you enter with something Carpath? Kappa. Are you playing Chaos Fairies again? That'd be hype. You have six ulti marks, so pump the price up. I know they're worth like a lot. I just don't know how much. They play it in Amaryllis, but they only play one. So you don't really need a playset for that list. Like you could technically play two just to see it more often, but I think it's a little bit inconsistent. So yeah, RBT Orlando, that's coming up next weekend. If you guys are in the area and you want to sign up, there's a there's a few a uh, few extra slots left in RBT Orlando before it's sold out. We're now entering the last five minutes before the tournament bracket is finalized. If you haven't already signed the fuck up, do it right now. Do it right now. And if you're skipping forward in the VOD and you've landed on this moment somehow, skip forward a little bit longer. <laughs> all, right, all right, all right, all right. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Man, this is a stacked fucking bracket. It is like half insanely good players. This is going to be a great tournament. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. If you guys want to donate to the prize pool, if you guys are enjoying what you see, any donation to the stream, any membership fees to the stream, these are all going towards the prize pool. And there's a link in the description below to a PayPal donation link, and that'll also go directly to the prize pool as well. Times 2 is in this bitch. Let's go. I love Times 2. I love watching him play. He's a fun player to watch. We see we saw him at Moreno Valley. I believe he got top 16 with Christian Sworn, or might have even been top 8. I don't remember. I have completely forgotten at this point. Oh, man. Exciting event. Exciting, exciting event. Who do you guys want to watch in round 1? Who do you guys want to see? I have a couple picks for round 1 that I would really like to see. 
but I want to know who you guys want to see. You guys, the the duelists in my chat. Who do you guys want to watch in round one? Share the spice now so we can get in early on the buyout. I was talking about buyouts on yesterday's stream. If you want to see a couple of cards that got bought out, check out. You want to see Fen round one? You want to see me, Kappa? I'm not in. I'm not in the tournament. I'm just covering it. You know Ryanite? He goes to your locals. That's sick, dude. Ryanite's dope. Small world. You want to see Carpath round one? You know the man, Ryanite. You know the man. You're delaying closing signups till 10 PST because challenge is slow. Okay, you got another 12 minutes to sign up, folks. Yeah, challenge has been the biggest hurdle. And hopefully we can get started on time. But, um, yeah. It's just been, their servers have been really, really spotty today, so. Okay, just a little bit longer, and then we'll get we'll get underway. We'll get underway. Shout out to the judges who are helping me run this event for free. Angle, and Sevilla, and Asian with Hat, and Hoff, the greatest moderators to ever do it. The most helpful, the most amazing people. Is a true hero coming? Yes, he is in the bracket. You can see him right there. He is signed up for today's event, so we could watch him as well. Is, are you asking if he's going to Orlando? I don't know if he's going to Orlando, but I know he signed up in this event today. So we're going to get to see some cool hero action, hopefully. 168 players. Oh, cool. Yeah, it looks like challenge is, is updating a little bit slower, but... We got Fitz. Fitz is in here too. DDV winner with Dragons Fitz. Oh, Pog Champ. I love Fitz. I actually think Fitz is one of my personal favorite players. There are some players that like I never get tired of watching, and Fitz is one of them. He's just really, really cool. He's always doing some fun stuff. Man, that's Pog. Dude, this bracket is so sick. It's literally all the goats, all the legends of the game in this bracket. Looking ahead for that round one spice, there's going to be some fire stuff in this tournament. I think people are going to be testing some crazy stuff because it's like the last online RBT, so it's like, might as well go all out of the season and then rbt orlando i think is when people are going to get really sweaty you've been play testing with fitz quite a bit lately he's a fun guy to play with man but who are we watching in round one i heard carpath brought some garbage i kind of want to watch carpath in round one because he's fresh off a win jay zaps also another powerful player now, a lot of fucking great players in this event. Holy shit. This is hype. That's a fire username, by the way. Dan Zalug. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love that. Do people just be having fire usernames? What can I say? We should be done, or we should be getting underway here in about nine more minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Type round one question mark versus question mark. Who are we watching in round one? Mocha Sneak says watch Fitz. Is Fitz playing something fire? We got to watch someone who's playing something fire round one. We can't watch someone who's not going to play something fire. Like I, I want to get some crazy stuff for round one. Because like the crazy stuff, it may not survive. <laughs> it may not survive in a bracket this stacked. But your first RBT, let's go, Benny. Let's go, dude. That's hype. Dude, that makes me so happy to, like, read messages like that and, like, see, like, see people get excited to play in these events. That's so sick. What's up, RGV Edison format? Hope the journey goes well. Can't make it. You're moving to Fort Worth tomorrow. Good luck with the move. Is that Ita on the other side? Good luck with the move, brother. Hope you have safe travels. Watch Ryanide. 
you know he's playing a weird deck. We could put we could watch Ryan Knight. Stealth Ninja got some weird fire for you. Okay. Okay. Your first RBT also only two weeks into Edison. Dan Zalug, dude, I was just talking about your username. It's so fire. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck in your first RBT. If you top, that's Pog Champ. That username is fire. Oh man, this is hype. All right, we're seven minutes in, seven minutes out from this tournament getting underway. What do you guys, everyone who's in the chat right now, what do you think is winning this event? You can only pick one deck. You can't, if you pick two decks, you're disqualified. Your answer is disqualified. You can only pick one. What deck is winning this event? Tell me right now. Tell me right now. What is winning this event? We need to know. Also, if you want to play bingo, play bingo along, along with us, courtesy of Ryan. Okay, we got vote for Vi Turbo, vote for Fairies, Light Sworn, Norlaris, Hero Frog, Hero Frog again from Times Two. Oh, shout out Times Two. Zombies, okay. Dragon Turbo, all right, all right. Battery Man, Ooh, wishful thinking. Machina Frog, interesting. Frog Monarch, Dragon Glurbo. Dragon Turbo has been destroying this year. It's won the most events, I believe, this year. If I remember correctly, it's either that or Value Turbo, which blows my mind because a lot of reasons. X Sabers winning the tournament. Do you know how insane you would have to draw to win a tournament this big with X Saber? Not enough likes on the stream. That's true, Ryan Knight. I agree. You wonder what Carpath is playing? Well, you're probably not going to have to wonder that much longer because we are going to watch Carpath, I believe, in round one. I'm feeling like we're going to watch Carpath round one. Micah says, not Pareliana, skull emoji. Yeah, because that person was banned <laughs> from the server. Uh, Carpath says, how dare you? <laughs> Docs and Carpath round one. Dark World winning? Dude, imagine. Imagine if Dark World wins an event. That'd be crazy. You want what Frosted Flake is smoking. You always get watched round one. That's because you said you were going to lose. We have to put you on camera before. Do you not want the free clout, bro? Do you not want the free clout? I'll, I'll put someone else on. I'll put someone else on. We don't have to watch you. I'll put someone else on. Really big. What's up, Raunik? Everybody salute. Salute Raunik, the goat, the frog goat himself in the chat. Here, also in the tournament, Pog Champion, we've got the greatest bracket known to man, 174 players, actually almost hitting 200, maybe, potentially. Like I said, somewhere in between 150 and 200 players, the bracket is still getting finalized, as far as I am aware, and then we should be good to go. We should be good to get underway. Very excited for this event, actually. Very, very, very excited for this event. Everybody show Angle your utmost respect. And all the other judges. Let's have a good event. Hearts. Okay, this is gonna be sick. Does anyone have a link to the bingo card? That's your favorite part? I got you, brother. I got you, math guru. Right there. If you wanna play bingo alongside with us, get your bingo card going. I'm actually gonna reset this bingo card. I wanna see the other options. Wait, I wanna refresh it. Sorry, that's what I meant. Wait, it's not giving me a new one. What the fuck? That isn't the fuck. Never mind. Don't don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Maybe it, it works that way. I don't fucking know. Anyway, we got the we got the bingo card. We got the bingo card. We got the bracket. We got three minutes left for people to get signed up, and then uh, we should be good to go. Looks like 173 players. One player has dropped. 
yeah, this looks like a good turnout. Looks like a good turnout in terms of quality. And looks like a good turnout in terms of just number of players. Pretty excited for this. It's going to be a really fun event. It always is. If you guys want to contribute to the prize pool, there's a donation link in the description below. All membership fees, all donations today go towards the prize pool of these events. These events are done by me and the judges for the community, for you guys. These events are for you guys. All of your money goes back into these events. Uh, all of the revenue from these streams goes back into making these events happen. They are free to enter. All you guys need to do to su support these is subscribe and donate to the prize pool and they can become really big and play in them, you know? Because they're these are ultimately at the end of the day for you guys. Uh, cool Dead Punk says, do I have anything resembling a plan for SoCal Vegas IRLs? Yes, I do have plans for Vegas and SoCal IRLs next year. I talked about it on yesterday's stream, uh, but today, today is is a new, is, we're focused on the online RBET right now. We're focused on the tournament right in front of our face that's beginning in two minutes. Very excited for this. Wait, it's showing me top chat? No, I wanna see live chat. What the fuck? There we go. There we go. I knew there was something wrong with it. I knew there was something wrong with this. Sefric says I joined, but I'm asked. Fuck it, join. Only one way to get better. What's up, Lorca Loca? What's up, Mar? These events are swag. Thanks for organizing to you and your team. Appreciate that, Mar. Thanks for enjoying the stream and enjoying the content that comes with it. Two minute and tell Yu-Gi-Oh game. Raunuk, two minute and tell Yu-Gi-Oh game. What's up, Pancake? How you doing? How you doing, Pancake? Dude, I am so fucking excited for this. I'm so hyped. Bringing the spice just to ruin the dish. That's hilarious. Pana says, this is the last online one. Yes, unless I decide to do a charity one last minute. But this is the last one of the season online, I believe. I might do something in December. Who knows? It depends on what happens in December. I might do a... We'll, we'll get to that at a different time. This is the last one as far as right now. As far as I know. Good luck, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. 123 watching and only 45 likes. The math isn't adding up. We need to hit 250 likes on this stream. It's just the only way to do it. Now, for round one, the bracket is being finalized currently. What's up, Darth Titus? How you doing? Uh, who, who are we watching? Who are we watching round one? I need you guys to tell me right now in the chat who we're watching. Are we watching Carpath? Are we watching Ravnook? Are we watching Ryanite? Who are we watching? Who are we watching in round one? Looks like we got a couple votes for Carpath. Totagon, if he's playing. I don't think Totagon is playing today, sadly. I would love to watch Totagon. Yeah, okay. Everybody's saying Carpath. Yeah, we're watching Carpath. All right. All right. Carpath, you got a lot of fans. We're watching Carpath round one. So round one is going to be Carpath versus... Big James, a.k.a. Cincy James. We'll watch him later. I expect Big James to do well. Capture EM99 says anybody. Just get to the fucking gameplay, right? Just get to the fucking match. Carpath looks like he's playing against PX Santos. Round one fight. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel do that now we are on our way to 40,000 subscribers I would love to hit 40,000 subscribers because that is technically full-time YouTube all right let's go ahead and hop into the games did I secure my moja stocks what's up 10 FD good luck in the event today brother searching for that that cursed name, Carpath. Where the fuck is he? Where's Carpath? Oh my gosh, look at all these matches. Look at all these beautiful people. I want to watch Tommy Dang. He's playing against El Pinguo around one. That would actually be a sick match. Tommy Dang versus El Pinguo. That would be a sick match. Carpath said zombies are good. 
Uh, zombies are in the eight decks that have won major tournaments. Good is all subjective. Card path, please. Where is he? Where? What? What? Where, where's card path? He's just, he's just not here. Can I tell everyone to host correctly? I tell them every video and they still don't. Cool dead punk. Car gone. Where did my car go? Carpath, please. Carpath, please. There he is. The minimum deck size for this format is 20. Suck my balls. What do you mean? There we go. Dueling book. Get your shit together. All right. We got Carpath versus Santos. Let's get your predictions in now, everybody. I don't know anything about Santos. I literally don't. Get your predictions in, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see him. Totagon would be amazing to watch. I would love to watch Totagon. I don't know if he's entered in this event, though, sadly. Let us see. Who's winning this one? We do know Carpath is playing a Carpath special. A jank jank deck we've got a set monster and we've got santos here thinking through what it means no we got carpath here thinking through what it means to t set team santos love me an underdog i don't know carpath's probably playing some garbage and it looks like santos is playing heroes so we got heroes versus garbage stratos gonna be summoned this is the first stratos of the tournament i expect to see a lot of these guys at least in the earlier rounds Stratos is probably going to search for Alias here. Santos, not a name I recognize, so he's probably playing Hero Beat. Oh, fuck off. We got Evil Heroes versus Garbage. Let's go. Evil Hero Malicious Thing. What is the Malicious... Dude. No. Evil Heroes versus Reptilians. Round 1. Activated. My Edison format is activated right now. I have been... I've, I've seen the future, and the future is Reptilians. Let's go. This is hype. You know what? I've actually lost a car path when he was playing this deck. I think it's legit because it beat me. I've actually lost him playing this. I've never wanted to rage quit more in my life than seeing car path. Get your votes in now. We got 75% for car path, 25% for Santos. You know what? A lot of, a lot of respect for Santos. He's an underdog here. Car path fresh off a win at an IRL tournament. Good morning, Vados. Welcome to the stream, everybody. This is so fucking hype. This is actually so fucking hype. Okay, we got Hero Frogs. Never mind. It's not Evil Heroes. It's Hero Frogs. Summon good. So it looks like Santos is probably a subscriber to the Hero Frog religion. This matchup is probably terrible for Carpath. Lubcho says, I called it. What did, what did you call? Oh, it could be Hero Frog. Yes, you did. You did call it. You did call it. A lot of people called it. Yes. Yes, most likely did call it. I was hoping for Evil Heroes, but this is cool too. I like Hero Frogs. I think this deck is cool. It was popularized by Cameron Saunders and Rownook. They built a list that got second and third place at... uh, What is that tournament? RBET. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Last year. <laughs> and then it got... I think it got top four at Nats in the hands of Fraser Smith. Fraser Smith is a big, big advocate for this deck. I think the deck is, it has its strengths. It has its weaknesses, you know, like every Edison deck. But it is a cool deck. We're going to see a Caius the Shadow Menork. You know what I'm saying? Menork. And we're going to attack over that Dupe Frog. Reptilian Gardener hitting the grave is kind of sad mode, but, you know, it is what it is. Santos going to go up to nine cards here with that Treeborn Frog. If you count Treeborn Frog as a card. Dylan Darkworld says Hero Frog has one of the highest ceilings. Does it? I feel like it has a lower ceiling than Diva Hero. And Dragons. And Black Wings. <laughs> I feel like the ceiling on Hero Frog is actually quite low. It's very consistent, but I feel like the ceiling is pretty low. Ooh, Book of Moon time. We got some Book of Moon gaming, flipping that malicious guy face down. Now, Santos is going to have to discard end phase if he doesn't commit to the board here. 
He's either going to have to play a back row or he's going to have to discard end phase. That card advantage immediately gone. Losing his Treeborn Frog and losing one for one. One for one having no value once the Substitutes are out of the deck. Kaya's just going to run over that Malicious guy and Carpath holding his cards very nicely here. He's got seven cards versus functionally eight if the Treeborn comes back. Vado says Burden of the Mighty into Sack Bolt for Vosky. Kappa cool. That could be cool. That could be really cool, actually. We could see some Burden of the Mighty gaming here from Carpath. I don't know if he's about that life, but we could see it. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Interesting stuff. What's up, Aaron Foreman? As long as your question is not a question for a moderator in the Discord, feel free to ask it. <laughs> Junk Synchron bring back Swap Frog. This could be a Goyo Guardian. Most likely is a Goyo Guardian. I actually don't like going Goyo Guardian here, but you kind of have to play through the back row somehow, and you just gotta you just gotta normal summon into it if you don't have outs. We're going attack, and he's gonna take the Caius. Okay, this is bad for Carpath. I think Carpath's back row is offering to the Snake Deity and Heavy Storm. Never mind, I, I'm completely wrong. <laughs> I am, I've never been more wrong in my entire life. It was scapegoat. It was some scapegoat gaming. And here comes Vosky. There's the first Vosky of this game. Gonna blow up the Goyo Guardian. And attack over that Caius, immediately securing the position back for Carpath. But Carpath's bleeding cards, and this is not really where you want to be versus Frogs. Uh, it is a strong position for him to have four threats in play with the two tokens. But I think... I think he's going to struggle here to uh, an enemy controller or a monarch or a miracle fusion. Miracle fusion could be deadly here for Carpath. And Santos has gotten all of the bricks out of his deck, aka all of the frogs, and so he has nothing but good cards. This is going to be Solemn Judgment on the first miracle fusion. Do we have a second miracle fusion? They always have it, at least when they play against me. They always have it. If it was good enough to Solemn, then it's definitely good enough to play the second one here. Rhoda. Okay. That's something you're pretty happy to see if you're Carpath, because that's a non-card. That is definitely a non-card. Um, Dylan Darkworld says, forgot about four brain controls. Usually they don't have room for four. I think they have to play one or two enemy controllers in Hero Frogs, because they don't have the deck space for the full three. So it's usually like one or two enemy controllers and one brain control. So it's usually two or three total steel effects. Wow, Rhoda and then set a monster. Kind of low impact. And this is the issue with Hero Frogs, in my opinion, is that a large majority of your deck sucks ass. You only have four monarchs. And once you've resolved Stratos, like you just have all these like mediocre engine cards like Malicious Edge and Stratos. That being said, with these two scapegoat tokens in play, if another malicious edge is found here, I'll oh, accidental zoom. All right, you get it. You get the bingo card. You get it. There you go. You guys happy? You guys happy about this? I bet you're happy. I'm happy. All right. Like the stream. God damn it. Fucking fix already. Okay. Just a attack over the second treeborn and then a set monster and pass. Now, Carpath could have flipped either of these monsters to attack with. I'm thinking it's reptilian monsters, the zero attack monsters. Uh, because, because, otherwise he could have gotten some damage in. Here comes Alias. Alias attack over a scapegoat token. That makes sense. And a set back row. Interesting. So this deck sometimes plays discard traps, sometimes it plays threatening roar. And there's that space typhoon. That's going to be uh, actually a decent space typhoon for card path that it's getting used there. Is there a link to the bingo card? Yes, I will drop it for you guys. Enjoy playing bingo, courtesy of Ryanite. Shout out to Ryanite, that's my goat. He made these bingo cards, made all the options for you guys. Reptilian Vosky. Now what? Carpath is thinking really hard here. I wonder why. He's going to attack the alias, get in some damage. No Tragodia. Usually the frog hero decks, they don't play Trag, they play Fader and Gores. 
Carpath has played around his opponent's Fader and Gores as much as he probably can. He has a lot of set monsters. I don't like setting this many monsters for a lot of reasons. Number one, if they don't float, Miracle into Absolute Zero wins. Like, you just crash into the Vasky and then you get a 5 for 1. <laughs> Which is <laughs> pretty crazy. 60 likes and 140 watching. Yeah, that's... Something is wrong there. There needs to be more likes. There just needs to be more likes on the stream. We need all of the likes so we can get that free space on the bingo card. All right. But it looks like Santos is playing passively, which is a tell of Gores. Sangin, yeah, that's kind of what I was predicting. This is actually a strong move from Carpath. He can attack here and then main phase two just pop the battle fader with the Vosky, picking up his plus one. Set three Sangin. Yeah, it could, it's probably like Sangin, Dandelion, and one Reptilian monster. So there goes the first Battle Fader. Vosky doing a good job of playing through that. Battle Fader without the Monarchs is really just a, a hard minus one. All five monster zones bingo spot. That's true. All five monster zones occupied. We're kind of getting it here. Treeborn coming back. Santos is in a position here where enemy controller, enemy controller wins, I think. No, not quite. Enemy controller take Vosky. So I don't love using the enemy controller like this because I like using the enemy controller to actually switch the token to attack position and get damage. I think that is a much better use of this enemy controller. Because Carpath's life total is low, and you want to drop him into Caius range, so that the second you top deck a Caius, you win the game. I think you, this use of enemy controller is not ideal. Uh, this just feels all sorts of wrong. Probably should have attacked over the Sangin. Oh my gosh. I feel like Santos has really just thrown away every single card in his hand this game. Like, that was a waste of an enemy controller. You really did not need to spend it that way. Uh, wasted the ocean, did not need to spend it that way. Wasted the swap frog. Um, and Carpath is just dominating in card advantage versus the deck that pluses every single turn. That's kind of crazy. I think Carpath has played this excellently. And I think Santos is showcasing the weakness of hero frogs in that it's like 90% engine and only 3 miracle, 3 Kaias for payoff. And when you just don't draw your payoffs, the deck does nothing. Lovecho says, could have done so much more to out the board. Could have attacked one of the sets with the Vosky. I feel like that would have been a good play. Um, pretty pretty poor use of enemy controller there, if you ask me. But what do I know? <laughs> I'm the commentator. <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, this doesn't look great. Definitely should have swung. Yeah, absolutely. Into one of the set monsters. Because, like, what if he swings into a set monster? Yeah, flip, dandy, torrential. Okay, yeah. And torrential is an FTK versus frogs usually. Oh, my God. He's going to get three pluses off of this. He's going to get a Gardener search, dandy tokens, and sang. And he's going to be able to summon that Vosky once more. Uh, he's declaring the chain links. Chain link one Sangin, Chain link two dandy. Chain link three Gardena. Very smart chain order here. Putting dandy chain link two. Blocking it from royal oppression. And blocking it from torrential tribute which is funny. Um, there's no reason to do that because the Frog player is obviously playing neither of those cards, potentially Torrential, but... Um, what do you search? He searched Gardena and Debris Dragon. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, Carpath is just crushing here. Heavy Storm going to eat that Space Typhoon. Oh my god, Carpath is dominating this game. Please summon Red Dragon Archfiend. Please summon Red Dragon Archfiend. He's not going to. He should, though. He should. I feel like Red Dragon Archfiend is, is the actually the play. Because you want to you want to clear your last token. Because you're going to have that leftover token. And you don't want Caius enemy controller to be the victory. Yeah, Red Dragon's actually optimal here. So the reason Red Dragon is optimal is because... If you have this token in play, he can go sack for Caius, banish Vasky, deal a thousand, and then enemy controller the token to attack. It's not quite lethal, but it's, it's tough. Stardust Dragon is worse... You don't want the token to sit in play. Also, Malicious Edge Pierce. Yeah, Red Dragon is definitely the better play. Vato says Thought Ruler. You can't make Thought Ruler with Debris Dragon. It can only be used for the Synchro Summon of Dragon-type monsters. So you can't make Thought Ruler here. 
There's Scapegoat, ironically terrible versus Vosky, Kek. Kill 2, set back row past the turn. <laughs> set monster. That was insane. I don't think Carpath ever looked like he was losing that game. Carpath made use of cards like Space Typhoon that were normally very bad in the frog matchup. And if I'm Carpath, I'm feeling pretty good after that game because his opponent misplayed too on top of all that. Like his opponent just didn't play well. So, um, yeah, that was that was a great game for Carpath. Very well played. Fitter becomes an issue if you go for Red Dragon. Guess so. Not really. Like you lose your Vasky, but not really. Not really. It forces last card out of his hand. Pretty sure Alias is trash in Hero Frog. Um, you have to play a certain number of E calls, but I know people like playing Alias because it improves the Gladiator Beast matchup a lot, and it also improves your E calls in the mid to late game and your Rota. Cool Dead Punk won game one. Congratulations. Now, can you win the match? Capture says, first game was like Messi is playing in MLS. That's funny. It's funny to call Carpath Messi. I don't know if that's an apt comparison, but maybe. I don't know. It's just funny. <laughs> A lot of back row from Santos here. I'm kind of surprised. I actually don't like setting this many back row with Hero Frog this early on. I like saving the back row until there's something worth hitting. At least in my opinion. I think setting back row in general in Hero Frog is a mistake. Unless it's Dust Shoot turn 1. I think they're talking about Messi the... The frog play. Oh, oh my. Oh my god, Carpath is the goat. Carpath is the goat. He's the goat. He just mind crushed that boy. He mind crushed the shit out of that boy. That was. That was based. Greetings from Brazil. Gr greetings to all Brazilian viewers. Shout outs, Brazil. Come to Brazil. Hashtag come to Brazil. That was, that was quite nice. That was quite nice. Carpath not even. It's saying fuck the back row. It ain't real. Oh my god, popping dupe frog. Dupe frog misses timing due to the mill. Attack for 200, and there's a scapegoat activation. But we're clearing one of those tokens. Carpath has fucking deck dev in? What a mad lad. So you can deck dev off Vosky, and you can also deck dev off of Red Dragon Archfiend. Oh my god, Santo set Space Typhoon? He set it turn one? Dude, if Carpath never sets a back row, Treeborn is dead the rest of the game. Terrible play. Actually terrible play to set the Space Typhoon. Not only is it terrible that he set it turn 1, but it's terrible that he didn't try to Space Typhoon end phase 1 of the back row that Carpath set turn 1. That was a, that was a very bad play. Here comes Trigodia, another deck devastation target. And that Trigodia is going to be stronger than that ocean, going to be able to run it over. So, uh, big moves from Carpath here. Big moves. Another back row from Santos. Is that a Regeki break for this Tragodia? I guess we'll see. I guess we shall see. Trag level 2. Huh. Debris Dragon, Normal Summon. Interesting. Think Resolution. I don't like this play. And I'll tell you why I don't like this play. Because of this. Yeah. This play means you lose Debris Dragon and Trigodia to one back row. Because Trigodia can't attack over the ocean. You can still clear the tokens, but... Yeah, I really didn't like this play. I liked going Trag attack the ocean, force the back row, and then saving the Debris Dragon. This, it, this play loses both Trag and Debris Dragon to the back row. Yeah, that was that was a bad play, um, in my opinion. That was that was not a strong play. He would have got the Stratos back either way, the man, because the back row would have defended. But this way, the back row 
trades for two cards instead of one. Now Stratos can pop. Oh, pulling the rug. Okay. But that's one pulling the rug you don't have for a Monarch later. So... I don't know. I... I feel like... I don't like this play that much. But who knows? You know, maybe it's... I don't know. Maybe Carpath just has a third Debris Dragon. Maybe he has an Avarice he wanted to use. I don't really know. Okay, here comes Trigodi Attack. If that back row is real, this is really tough. Yeah, the Ocean's going to activate again. I think Carpath's kind of falling apart here. He could have attacked the main phase 2 stole Ocean. He could have main phase 1 stole the Ocean. He's getting burned for that for sure. He's getting super, super burned for not stealing the Ocean. Because if he steals the Ocean, and then just attack attacks the tokens, Santos has nothing. Like, he just has nothing. But as it stands now, Santos has gotten two free Stratoses. He's gotten two free Stratoses! Yeah, Carpath botched this one pretty hard, I think. That was not... not ideal. Alright, well... I go from playing really well game one to falling asleep at the wheel game two, but... There's always game three. <laughs> there's always game three. I think Santos is too far ahead. I don't think there's any way Carpath can come back from this. Minecraft Stratos was cool, and Minecraft Stratos would have won. Dude, that Stratos, the ocean killed two pulling the rugs, and it's going to kill a Trigodia. That is the most value I've ever seen from an elemental hero ocean. That's insane. That ocean killed three high value cards. Each one of these cards was enough to win this matchup. That being said... We've got a Vanity's Boy off the top. And all of a sudden, Carpath is back in this. All of a sudden, he's back in this. Vanity's destroys this deck. Yeah, that ocean, that was the most insane ocean I've ever seen. That was a very, very strong ocean. He did also have to use his enemy controller and threatening roar, so it wasn't just the ocean. So the card advantage is is even. But um it, it didn't trade very, it, it worked out very well that the ocean stuck around, basically. Sun, Goku, and friends are here. There's Regeki Break. That's one of the few outs to Vanny's Fiend, but it does do it at a deficit. So, drops a card for Santos. What's insane for Carpath, I'm looking at his sideboard strategy here. He's got Deck Dev, Pulling the Rugs, Vanny's Fiend, Mind Crush, Compulsory. He's got at least six sideboard cards here that he's brought in for this matchup. That's a lot of sideboard cards. And... Despite resolving four of those sideboard cards, he's still losing because of the way he sequenced that one turn. So, sequencing matters a lot. I'll just go on record and say it. It matters a lot. There's Ryko that's going to trade with the Absolute Zero. You're probably very happy about this trade if you're Carpath. Milling Dust Shoot, Milling Ryko, Milling Gardena. Avarice is now super live. If that's a card that Carpath plays. We haven't seen a single spell card from him this entire game. How's it going, Croco Lord? Thanks for tuning in, my guy. Oh, there's Heavy Storm. Here comes Chain Call of the Haunted on Reptilian Gardener. That'll at least get a plus one for Carpath here. But uh, I would have just cast that Soul Release. I don't know what we were waiting for. You kind of lose to a Miracle Fusion there. So I probably would have just cast it. T-Set Pass. Carpath has sighted in at least seven cards for this matchup, though. That's pretty crazy. Charge of the Light Brigade. Milling Quick Draw, Allure, and Offering to the Snake Deity. What are we searching for here? Nothing. That's an illegal Charge of the Light Brigade activation. All three Rikos are in the graveyard. Very sloppy game. Very, very sloppy game. They're probably going to need to get a judge call um, on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I will message the players to call a judge. Um, get judge rolling. Santos needs to wait. Here's the judge call. Does that is that on here? We have a judge call. Where is it? 
Where is it? It's got to be on here. There it is, judge call. There it is, baby. There it is. We're on our way to bingo. Judge man incoming. We should get a judge man. What is it? Judge man Yu Gi Oh. We should get it. Judge man. 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 This card goes so hard. I wish it was actually good. Judge man. Judge man. Judge man. Judge man. Judge man. All right. Getting the judge. Getting El Judgerino out here. El Judge. Oh, no. Oh no. Looks like we've got uh got the judges manually doing the br bracket due to uh some issues. Ah, pain. Pain. Dylan says Santos said it's good to just continue. Yeah, but Santos not the judge, so he can't make that call. Dylan. And it's not good to just continue. Says it thinking it's a bingo card swear. All judges should have a judgment avatar. Oh no. Couple of people reporting their losses. I'm going to ask if they need help with bracket updates. Looks like challenge is being a pain in the ass and giving us some issues. Sorry, lads. We've got some uh, technical difficulties on my end. RSA says, why not just continue? Because uh, they need to get a judge to rule on whether or not we should shuffle this back. Okay. It looks like it should be uh, returned. Skeprock says, should have been Big James and Ghost Rider feature round one. Uh, we watched Ghost Rider enough last RBET. And we'll probably see him in the later rounds. Okay. Um. Just updating some stuff in the Discord. All right, cool. We should be good. We should be good to move forward. Looks like Carpath had to pass, and here comes the second Miracle Fusion of the game. Another reason to use that Soul Release. I mean, big reason to use that Soul Release was just so that this couldn't happen. Gonna attack over the Gardener. Gardener's gonna search probably the third Gardener. This guy searches any Reptilian monster, though. He can search for Vosky, which is really cool. Smith clone says, you think it's a game loss since he milled? No. <laughs> no, it's a reversible game state. It's not a game loss at all. It's just a mistake. It's a warning, I think, but it's not a game loss at all. That's crazy to see to think that. <laughs> what? Um Just imagine like you accidentally mill a card, game loss. <laughs> Judge said put them back and continue play. Yep, sounds about right. I don't know. Carpath is kind of he's he's kind of in a spot here. Since it gets effect from any kind of destruction, pairs well with Snake DD Trap. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Because the Snake DD Trap destroys um, the monster. 
please turn in your deck and binder. Caius is going to target the set monster, or set back row. Yeah, obviously he's going to target the set back row. Well, I would have targeted the monster, but that's just me. Carpath is playing this game super sloppy. He needs to wake up. He needs to wake up. He needs to activate. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Shout out to all my mods. Give me one second. I'm just sending a message to one of the mods. Cool. Kai's the Shadow Monarch putting in that work. Garden is searching for probably Vosky. Isn't zero always chain link one? Yeah. It is. It's an effect, so I'm pretty sure it misses timing. Yeah, zero would be chain link one here anyway. Even if Reptilian Garden have missed timing, but it doesn't because it's it's not optional. It's actually mandatory effect. What the fuck is this? If this card destroys a monster with zero attack by battle, you can special summon that monster from your graveyard. It's like a mini Goyo. What the fuck is... I've never seen this shit in my life, but that's based. Oh, what the hell? And we're back. And I'm back in the game. Wait, wait a second. What, what is going on? What's that? What the fuck is this? Carpath kind of killing it. Oh, okay. He's, got, he's cooking. He's kind of cooking. Okay, 2400. It's a little weird that Santos sacked Abso Zero for Caius. I feel like I would have just not done that, but I don't know. Brain control? Okay, taking Caius. What now? Second Vanity's Fiend. This man boarded in nine cards for this matchup. Giga Chad? Giga Chad confirmed? Carpath has said in videos that one Skilla is kind of needed to get the reptilian enough reptilians for the engine. Dude, I can't believe Carpath is actually in this. Never mind. I lied. That was that was I was just lying. That was a lie. We got brain control on both sides, and this is lethal if there's no mirror force. If there's no D prison. Damn, Carpath honestly choked that game. That was a huge, huge brutal game for Carpath. Okay, Allure of Darkness. It's kind of where you want to be, always. Banishing Tragodia. Carpath said, fuck it. I'm not going to remember to use Tragodia's effect. I'm just going to banish it. <laughs> I'm just going to banish it. I'm not going to remember it, so I'm just going to banish it. By the way, Tragodia is insane in this matchup, so banishing it is not is ridiculous. It's literally probably the single best monster in this matchup. Probably. That means he has... Either no other darks, or he had one other dark that was necessary for his hand functioning. But Tragodia is the best card in this matchup, by far. So, banishing it is crazy. Alas, we are seeing some e-calls being used. Hmm, perhaps. Lepcho says probably was bricked up. Tragodia is never a brick, it's just always live, especially when you're at 8,000. It's like as good as it gets. Pitch the ocean special swap, sending treeborn. So we're getting set up. We can bounce the Stratos here if we want to. Dylan Darkworld says he only had one misplay. The Trag. That was a pretty big fucking misplay. <laughs> like even... I don't know. If that makes sense. It's like... 
Okay, Raiko gonna trade with Swap Frog. So confirming our suspicions that he didn't have another dark. Gonna get two tokens here. Vosky is now online if he wants to play it. If he has it even. Santos is down cards, but he's got Stratos in hand, which is a plus one. He's got Treeborn Frog in the grave, which is a plus one. So he has a few ways to pick those cards back up. Yeah, that debris play was a game losing play for sure. And here comes Vosky. Looks like he did draw it or had it. I am genuinely surprised he decided to... Wow, we're pitching Malicious Edge here. I feel like we shouldn't do that, but what do I know? The cool thing about Vosky is it allows you to make two plays in one turn. He can now set a monster on top of uh, special summoning. So he's kind of killing it. Cool Dead Punk says we need Santos to put up the dupe block already. He did it game one, but it just didn't stick around because of Caius. Here comes Treeborn Frog. What is that Treeborn going to do? Is that going to be a Monarch? Is that going to be a Substitute? What is the move here from Santos? It is a Monarch. Here comes pulling the rug, I'm assuming. Wow, no. Just no pulling the rug. Just completely resolved Caius. And no real back row from Carpath. That is unfortunate for him uh, in this one instance. That's just going to be tough. I was kind of shocked to see Carpath having Offering to the Snake Deity in post-board, because I feel like this card is not very good versus Frogs post-board. Same thing with Deck Dev. I feel like Deck Dev is not very good versus Frogs, particularly Frog Heroes. I think it's not very good. So he could have like a dead Deck Dev that he was maybe hoping to uh, have live with that Vosky. Um, but then he ran into that Regeki break, which is an issue. Yeah. If the back row in Carpath side is deck dev, then he should have waited a turn on the Vosky. But he might not have gotten another opportunity to use it. If he had the Vosky in hand when he used Allure, he should have banished that instead of Trigodia. There was a couple of different things that, like, we'd have to watch the replay to, like, really know if they were misplays or not. But who do I think is winning this match? Currently, Santos is ahead. Like, he's very far ahead. He has a Stratos in hand, so he has at least another plus one. And he has all of the pressure in play. So he, he's just very far ahead this match. I think that it will be very hard for Carpath to come back from this, given that his first two back row, the ones closest to the deck, didn't stop Akaius. Here's a scapegoat. Let's see if he wants to kill one of those. He does. Makes sense. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. Here comes Junk Synchron. Interesting. Very strong play here. You can go into the Swap Frog, and then Swap Frog bounce your Caius. Priority bounce Caius, yep. And you can just pass, yeah. You don't even need to Synchro here. I actually really like this play from Santos. He tightened up his play a lot from game one. I really, really like this. This position is great for him. He has two threats, Junk Synchron and Swap Frog, in play. Carpath needs to clear both of them, and he just doesn't have a way to do that. Because he didn't summon anything last turn. This is game three, Deputy Stag. You're sad Carpath isn't playing Moja? I'm happy he isn't, because I would not have liked to watch that as much as I like watching this, because I think this deck is cooler than Moja. Call of the Haunted, okay. We're bringing out Sangin. Sangin can run over the Swap Frog, but it just becomes a Kaius target. Oh, Brain Control, okay, this is big. This is a big Brain Control. Brain Control moment. Because now we can make a Synchro. This is one of the things that could have potentially punished Santos for leaving Junk Synchro on a play and not Synchroing. But even then, like, this still isn't ideal. What does Carpath want to do? I feel like you just want to go Goyo and steal the Swap Frog. Deal with this as Mistworm go crazy here. I think Mistworm is a missed play, if you feel me. Yeah, I think it's Goyo. Are we going to Android to gain life? Catastrophe. Okay, I mean... 
there's some stuff happening here. There's some stuff happening here. What? What is this? Stardust? Red Dragon, maybe? I feel like you have to synchro with the Sangin. Yeah, you synchro with the Sangin and the token. You make Stardust. You search Quick Draw. You're mad that you missed the Van Gogh Pikachu. I'm sorry to hear that, the man. RDA for the fans? No, never RDA, unfortunately. You would blow up your own Cataster that you worked so hard to complete. I'm going to search another Debris Dragon. Okay, that's pretty good. That'll give you at least a direct attack. So we've got 2,500 damage coming across this turn, unless there's a Battle Fader. We do know about Stratos, Caius in hand. So there's two unknown cards, and Stratos, Caius are in hand. This is going to be an interesting one. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why we're going for this play. You just want to get the bingo. You had to walk away. This is game three. I should probably put that thing. Where is it? There we go. Everybody like the stream. We do need to hit 250. Oh, that's why we went Cataster. Okay, yeah. So he did have the deck dev. Okay. So the deck dev is going to clear both of those. We're going to get a, a chance to see the hand. There's an evil guy. We got Stratos, Stardust, not Stratos, Stratos, Caius, and one unknown. But I don't like deck dev here. I, I just don't think it's very good. Steven Dawson says, could he not have had game with Nitro? I don't think he could have made Nitro. Because he already spent his normal summon on the debris. He could have maybe... What does Nitro do again? He could have gone... Brain Control... Make Goyo Guardian, Search Quick Draw, Make Nitro that way. If he had another monster in hand. He did, he had the Debris. Uh, this did not work out well for Carpath, though. Yeah, Deck Dev doesn't really answer the Caius. Yeah, it doesn't really answer anything, actually. It didn't do anything at all. My brother in Christ... That is a reptilian skilla. He could have used deck dev on Treeborn next turn, but bad versus Econ. He could have done a bunch of different things, honestly. But I think the player has priority. There's Miracle Fusion off the top. Yeah. I think this one's Jover. Never mind, there's Mind Crush. Okay, Mind Crush can name Miracle Fusion. So powered up by the deck dev, Mind Crush able to hit that Miracle Fusion. But I think Summon Stratos here is just too strong, isn't it? Like, don't we have game? If the back rows were a Geki break... No, not quite game. You're curious why you think Mistworm was a misplay? It seemed decent enough? Because you spend your entire board... And you just get in 2500 damage when your opponent's at 8000. And then they just Caius your Mistworm. I... Yeah. Cool that Punk says you have time to shower before round two with these reporting issues. I don't... Nah, the, I don't know. I don't think there should be issues with reporting. Um, I believe that there's time. Yeah, Carpath kind of got... He kind of got diced up game two and game three. Kind of got diced up. That one didn't work out too well. He could have chained Regeki Break. Was Regeki Break the card? Did we know the back row was Regeki Break? Challenge is broken. Yeah. Challenge is... We knew this could be an issue. Well, it looks like it's loading just fine for me. But it's just going to be a lot of manual reporting, which is not great. Unfortunately. Okay. Okay. So Carpath goes down. Uh, I think game two, he definitely had it. He just he just misplayed a lot. Not a lot, but enough. We knew that the last card was Regeki Break. Yeah, he should have chained it then. That would have been the best play. Santos misplayed too, but not enough to matter. Not enough to matter. All right. 
So, we've still got some active matches, I believe. We can tune in on those. Okay. We're just handling some judge calls. Carpath says, should I drop? Uh, if you're not feeling it, yeah, that's up to you, man. I, I can't tell you what to do. I feel like the, um, the bot issue is annoying, but it doesn't really affect your tournament experience. It only affects ours on the back end, I guess. Uh, if you're not feeling it, I think there was a pretty big misplay game too that, that would, that would tilt the shit out of me, but uh, you could probably run, like your deck looks good. Your deck looks good. It looks like it has what it takes. I don't think there's like an issue with the deck. It's just up to you, man. So, alas, here we are. Okay. I think I'm going to help with the manual reports. So I need to log into this real quick. Give me a moment. We're just going to do this. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We gotta log into challenge. Logging in. You just go 7 0, Kappa. Kappa. Alright, log in. Cool. Log in. And we can help manually update the bracket to make it go a little bit quicker. F's for Carpath in the chat. You got nothing else to do today, Kappa. Yeah, same. Honestly, just kidding. All right, so we can help update the bracket. We got, I believe, Fitz lost. So how do I update this? Is there a way to do this? Match details. Oh my. Challenge is wonderful. absolutely wonderful sorry guys we're just getting some stuff sorted and then we can um, figure it out from there Jesus dude this is insane oh challenge says you lost okay we'll try and get that corrected um, as soon as challenge is done being challenge. No! It's on the bingo card. <laughs> is this on the bingo card? Dude.
Okay, we're back. We're back, I guess. Deep breaths, deep breaths. Oh, I'm logged out now. Now I'm logged out, so I gotta log back in. Oh, but now it's a server error. I did say this would happen yesterday. Dude, challenge has been particularly bad. It was really bad during Deck Devastators. This is so bad. Oh my god. Ugh, try not to tilt. All right, everybody, I need your positive energy right now. Spirit bomb me with positive energy because your boy is uh, your boy is experiencing some tilt, some IRL tilt. Some we're trying to make something cool happen, and it just it can't happen. It apparently can't happen. Uh, pain. Alright. Alright. Alright, man. And it's back somehow. <laughs> and we're logged in again somehow. Okay. Yeah, you feel this snack. Alright, 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 alright. Alright. I'm gonna try to report a match. We're gonna try to get... One of these matches reported. Let's try to do this one with car path. Match details. Report scores. Dude. Come on, man. Why is this... Why is this happening? Ah. Is Snack playing? Yeah, Snack is playing. What did they mean by this? Maybe it's because we're all logged into the same account. But that shouldn't be an issue, right? Yeah, here we are. This is the fourth tournament by now where Challenge decides not to do his job. I think it is the fourth, yeah. Sadly. I mean, it's like, it's loading the bracket, kind of. Ish. But it's like not letting me update the matches manually which is like okay it's, if you're not going to update the matches then have we looked into other tournament software options yes we have they're all not good the reason challenge is the one we use is because it can interact with the bot when it doesn't crash. But the other ones are all like either paywalled and have to be done manually anyway, or they're like hyper convoluted, like the GG ones. I dead ass my just.
cancel this. I don't know. I think Sevilla is, is updating the bracket as of right now. Down bad. Sorry, guys. My silence is telling. Hey, Angle, what do you think we should do while you're here? Do you think we should just cancel it? Oh. People are like, it's burdening the server. I guarantee you it's m not my traffic that's burdening the server. I know, it would suck. You're saying let's do it manually? Bro, that's asking a lot to do eight rounds of this manually. Run it back tomorrow. We could run it back tomorrow. Just fire a double elim if it dies again. No, challenge is the re challenge is not working. Go format. So I can't fire another tournament because the website is not working. Oh, manual is much easier. Yeah, manual for double elim is easier. But I just don't see the fucking point in doing that. You know what I mean? I guess if we're gonna manually do the bracket, we might as well just continue it from here. Because I don't want to void everyone's everyone's matches, you know? It probably won't be a full eight rounds of manual. It won't, The traffic won't overload it. I don't know if it's the traffic that's overloading the site, man. It, we don't know that. We don't know if traffic is overloading the site. We, we just know that the site is not working for one reason or another. I doubt it's traffic. It might be the bot plus so many people logged in tried disabling the bot. I don't I don't own the bot, so I can't disconnect the bot from I can't disconnect the bot from challenge, but I don't think it's that. Like this site is used by a lot of people. Like there are a lot of tournaments happening today. I don't think it's just our one little tournament that's crashing the site. You've closed your tab for it to send positive energy. Kyrick says as someone who lost, you're personally fine with voiding it and might just have to wait and hope it gets fixed and run extra rounds. Saturday morning is probably just a very busy time for challenge. Yeah, that's probably most likely what it is. Yeah, this is most likely not our fault. Shorty B says it works better in incognito mode for you for some reason. 
okay, I don't know if that's that has anything to do with the server that is 404-ing, but maybe it does. I don't fucking know. Everyone who is XO gets a joint win. Yeah, everyone who won round one, you're an RBET winner now. No, I'm just kidding. You're going to give it another half hour? If challenge is still not cooperating, just cancel the tournament. I agree with that. We're going to give it some time. In the meantime... What's up, duelists? Oh, this is very unfortunate. I'm so sorry, guys. This fucking sucks. Man, this sucks. All right, let's try and let's try and pivot the conversation to something a little bit more positive while we're here. Um. Damn. Billy. It's not my browser. Everyone is having the same issue with challenge. Phantom Air says, think you have time to go to the store. You have 30 minutes. How many players were in the tournament? 174 were in the tournament. So. <laughs> is that JDZ logged into GOAT format? You're funny as fuck, man. If that's JDZ. Let's go touch some grass. Smash the like on the way out. Enjoy your Saturday. We got one match from Carpath, and that's it. Oh, this is the most blue balls RBET ever. JDZ, you're the go, dude. You're so funny. <laughs> what the hell? I am suffering internally. All right, all right, all right. All right, here's the deal. This is the last online RBT of the season, all right? Going out like this would be depressing, but let's reflect a little bit on the great season we've had so far, you know? Yeah, the next bracket is going to be on sheets. If we have to do it manually, then we're going to have, we'll just use Excel or whatever the fuck. Um... We've had a great season this far, right? A lot of amazing events, particularly thus far, RBET Moreno Valley. We have RBET Orlando coming up. We will not be using Challenge for RBET Orlando, thankfully. It's okay, Enraged Peacock. It's not you. It's Challenge, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry this tournament's going this way, but we will not be using Challenge for RBET Orlando, which is next weekend. This is maybe not the best time to promote this, but there's only a few slots left for RBT Orlando. If you want to play in a really, really hype Edison tournament like the one that we were supposed to have today, uh, RBT Orlando will go off without a hitch. This is being hosted at Versus Games in Orlando. Go ahead and scan the QR code on screen or check the description below for a link to signups to RBET Orlando. Technical difficulties. Yeah. All right, we're just gonna fuck challenge. There we go. Oh, this is heartbreaking, dude. Dota says, pivoting combo, how do you deal with recruiters without traps? A little bit too much of a pivot. How do we sort rounds and results for IRL RBT? We use the Konami software because they are OTS sanctioned official Konami tournaments. My guy. Limitless, please. Can we use Limitless for Yu-Gi-Oh events? For Is there a bot that connects with Limitless? I would love to use Limitless fan account. There's a bot that connects with Limitless? No bot. Oh. Oh, okay. Damn. What have you missed? Bracket's not working? Yeah, the bracket crashed. We can use Limitless manually, yeah. Guess you just gotta get sanctioned. Yeah, we are sanctioned for, for the IRL tournaments. So let's pivot the conversation a little bit, something a little bit more positive. Next year, let's talk about next season while we're 
killing time. We got to wait to see if challenge is going to correct itself, self-correct itself. It probably won't. But if it doesn't correct itself, then I'm sorry. We've done what we can. We could manually do the bracket, but I'm not going to ask that of the judges and the moderators who are functionally volunteering uh, for this. We're all functionally volunteering. Um, fucking hell, man. Next season. Next season, I'm hoping to do more IRL tournaments than online tournaments. So where are we doing IRL tournaments next year? Obstalot, I will still stream. I will still stream the duration of the day for everyone who is um for for everyone who is around, who everyone wants to hang out and watch some Edison format. I will still stay live. So we don't have to we don't have to worry about that. Um entertainment will be provided. Alright? For everyone who wants to hang out, there will be entertainment today. But while we're waiting on the bracket, let's talk a little bit about... Martin says, called the two-hour round one. You did call it. Uh, challenge, unfortunately, out of our control. Can we try manual for a round or two and hope it fixes? We've b That's the issue. Is we've been trying manual, and the site is just not loading. That's the issue, Cool Dead Punk. So, I'm seeing a lot of requests for Florida again. I'm seeing requests for London. Europe is definitely on the table. Philly or DC area is also on the table. Thank you, Elusive Mirror, for the super chat. It means a lot. Roundex has rescheduled to tomorrow. That's on the table. We may yet reschedule for tomorrow. We may yet reschedule. Pacific Northwest, I would love to do Portland, Oregon. That would be a city that I would love to throw a tournament in. I've talked to one of the mods, Sevilla, and a couple other streamers in that area about doing one in Portland, Oregon. Texas, I would love to do one there. Vegas, I am working on. SoCal is for sure going to happen. So next year, I can pretty much guarantee SoCal is going to happen. Stealth Ninja, I would link up with Big Boy, but they run cash tournaments, and they're not sanctioned. And my tournament series is sanctioned by Konami, so I can't do that. Um... I cannot work with stores or venues that are not sanctioned. They have to be OTS sanctioned stores. That is part of the requirements of hosting an RVET. Um, anywhere in the Midwest, hopefully, hopefully Texas. Does that count as Midwest? Kind of. Hopefully Texas. I haven't connected with any venues from Texas. I was hoping for Chicago, but the venue that I was talking to, they never followed up with me, unfortunately. Um... You wrote a message, but you had no idea what happened to it. What did your message say? You're sending strength and love. I appreciate that, Elusive Mirror. That means a lot. Charlotte would rock. True. Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Madison? If we reschedule, can we do it next weekend? You. There's an ad for what I'm doing next weekend on the screen. <laughs> no, I can't do it next weekend. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> I literally have a different tournament I'm doing next weekend. Uh... <laughs> Texas isn't really Midwest, but it's close enough to drive, so it should be doable for... RBT Russia based? No, not based, actually. I'm not sure if Russia is... Is Russia based? I'm not sure. Why not Florida again, but in Miami? Venue, Brandon Lamb, venue would be the reason. If I was going to do it again, I'd probably work with Versus Games again, depending on how the event goes. There's a tournament happening on October 14th in Texas? Cool. If you guys have any upcoming tournaments you want to talk about, you can plug them here. RBET Siberia. Great suggestion. RBET Turkey. Okay. I'm actually, I think I'm going to Turkey next year, but for personal reasons, not for, not for Yu-Gi-Oh. I would love for New Zealand. That'd be really cool. RBET Guam. <laughs> RBET Palestine, free Palestine. Will there be an RBET in EU one day? Ideally next year, Pancake. Ideally next year. <laughs> Jonah says balding. Yes, I'm going to go get the hair plugs. No, I'm, not. I'm going to Turkey for family reasons. I'm Middle Eastern. I don't know if you guys know that or not, but... <laughs> yes. Uh, I would be going to, to visit family. 
RBT, Keegan's living room. <laughs> That's already happened, Ryan and I, but we could do a run back. RBT2, Keegan's living room. <laughs> it's a Russian ladies are based, but not sure about the rest. <laughs> All he knows is the ladies. <laughs> RBT Maldives. You have a 32-player tournament on the 21st here in Germany. That sounds fun. Any idea of country? I would do... I would do Germany because it's central and they have a huge Edison following there and I have connections for venues there. Um, if I was going to do a country in Europe, most likely would be Germany. But I would I would do it in any country that could house me. I would do it in France. I would do it in London, UK. I would do it in Ireland. I would, Belgium. I'd do it in the Netherlands. I'd do it anywhere as long as there's a venue that can be sanctioned, that can do the thing. And host that many people. Italy, I do it in Italy. Shout out all my Italian viewers. You guys are the goats. I see you guys. Appreciate that, Baron. Flocom says RBT in German. Yes. Shout out Flocom, dude. RBT Antarctica based. Hello from Italy. Salute all my Italian viewers. Would you host it on a boat? Would I host it with a goat? God, I love Ronick. He's making this day stomachable. Okay. Um, angle, 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 angle. Ah. <sighs> Where are we at? I think we may need to write a heartfelt post. Angle, any luck with uh, challenge? Or are we... Um, are we still at the same place? If we're still at the same place, I'm down to preemptively uh it's slow but it is working okay well let's say let's say 11 30 if the bracket if the bracket hasn't sped up by 11 30 Yeah, if being able to update the bracket hasn't sped up by 11.30 or 11.25. Because, like, look, I need to I need to alter the scores. I click on it, and then we get Rainbow Wield of Death. Lovecho says, get out of challenge just in case. I don't think it's traffic, dude. I don't think it's traffic. It's their servers, man. Their servers are just bad. This happens even when there's low traffic to the site. And it might also be that Saturday morning is, like, busy for their server or something, but... I don't think one or two users getting on and off challenge isn't going to be. Introvert just got back. Is there issues with the tournament? Yes. There are issues. The software we're using to update the pairings is not working. So we may need to pivot. Lobcho says, any billionaires in chat able to buy out challenge and actually make it good? There are some people who could do that theoretically, but... It would be a non it would be a, a huge money sink and it would not be worth their time or investment. But there are definitely people who could afford to do that. It, you wouldn't even need to be a billionaire, like probably if you were a millionaire. I appreciate that, Barbie. What are you doing today? You wanna to come over? Are you working today, Ar Luis? God damn. There we go. We got there. Wait. Did that work? That worked. Nice. We reported one. All it took was like an hour. Yay. Hold. Hold. Pogchamp. 
Yay. Hold. Hold. I'm like scared to click on another one. <laughs> Is there no other freeware that can be utilized in the future? Okay, crude human. There's other freeware, but it would be manual. The reason we use challenge is because it connects with the bot and the players can report and it'll automatically update it with the on the bracket. But everything crashed today. Everything crashed. Challenge crashed and it's not reading inputs from the bot. So There are other ones we could do, but the bracket is already inputted here, so we'd have to export this bracket, input it into another software, and then manually update it for the whole tournament. Uh. Down bad. Cool Dead Punk, you said you won, right? We wait another hour. <laughs> we wait another hour. Mifif says this is a crazy matchup. Is that an Operation Ivy avatar? That's crazy. Angle says you say we just cancel? Yeah, I'm down, Angle. Let's cancel the tournament. Let me update the stream title. Fuck it. Ah! <laughs> That's so annoying. I want to cry. I like actually want to cry. Oh, that is so annoying. What happens with donations and prize money? Well, so far we've received whatever donations and prize money will be will go into the will go into the prize pool of the next one. Whatever it is, if we redo it tomorrow or the next RVET. It'll go into the next one. Fucking hell, man. Dude, did Carpath's plays kill Challenge? Angle's asking me if we should delay till tomorrow or cancel. Let's delay till tomorrow, Angle. And we'll use the same standings. Let's delay till tomorrow. And if you won round one, then we're going to use the same standings tomorrow. That's the best I can do. The best I can do is we can try again tomorrow. And if it doesn't... And tomorrow we can... Like tonight we can spend time like researching alternatives. Very long day two tomorrow. Well, it's the best we can do, man. You couldn't even get into the bracket. I'm sorry to hear that. Can we do anything else tomorrow is bad? Unfortunately, no. I mean, if tomorrow was bad for you already, then... I mean, this tournament is a two-day tournament. So, if tomorrow was bad for you... Andrea says, once in a life that you have time to play. I'm so sorry, Andrea. I, I wish there was a better solution to this. It's out of my control, man. Tomorrow, it'll be the same start time as today. We'll, we'll reconvene tomorrow. Same start time as today. Oh, that is so fucking miserable. Down for some Yu-Gi-Oh tonight? Yeah, I'm super down. Uh, I might I might stream a bit more. Dylan, are you... What are you doing? Are, when are you off tonight? Are you working right now, Dylan? James Arnold says, if you want to look into Limitless and you can help in any way, please let me know on Twitter, Discord, your Wames games. Okay. Um, 
Yes, message me on Discord and I'll get back to you as soon as I'm off stream. Message me on Discord and we'll we'll talk about it as soon as I'm off stream. Brandy Lamb says everyone bored and pissed off. Yeah, myself included. I'm so sorry, guys. Spencer, what are you doing tonight? Spencer, are you off? We might be able to put something together that doesn't suck ass. I might be able to still put on a cool stream for you guys today. Maybe we can get some IRL Edison stream going. This is really unfortunate. You're free at 8? We might be able to do like a late night like Ed Edison stuff. Yeah, if you want to come over, Barbie. We can try to get us. I can try to set up the stream on my in my living room, and we can do an IRL stream. Brent says use Disaster Dragon. Haven't played it in a while. Yeah, I'll I'll use it if we can get a stream going. You can make a video saying you won RBT four round one. That'd be funny. Any coders that would help make a new site? I don't think it's the code necessarily. I think it's more so the server. Do some money matches or something. Yeah, we could do some. Uh, no worries, Fitz. Thank you for, for everything you've done. Thanks, Juan. I appreciate it. No, you guys' kind words are are really, really helpful, actually. I'm super sorry about this, everyone. I'm super, super sorry. We've tried to use Start GG, and it's terrible, Cough. We've tried to use Start GG. Do an eight-man tournament if I want. We are still going to stream. We're still going to stream. We're still going to entertain each other. Let's move off of this real quick. Let's move on to this. Let's move this... Let's move off of this and move on to this stuff. Let's put this guy in the corner. What the fuck is happening? Fuck challenge. Fuck challenge. Oh my god. Manga says it's not my responsibility. It kind of is my responsibility because I'm... I'm putting on an event and I've asked a lot of people to set aside time for their day and I've chosen to use this software and we know that this software is dodgy and I don't have a backup. So it is my fault. It is my responsibility. And so I'm very sorry for that guys. I, I genuinely apologize. I will make it up to you guys. I will make it up to you guys in one way. I will. I'll make sure we do something cool for you guys. Um, but I'll figure it out. I just gotta, I'll think about it off stream tonight and uh, figure out how I can make it up to you guys. Alex Sargent, what is on the screen in front of you? It says RBT Orlando, October 7th. Next Saturday, I am, I'm doing something. I can't, I can't do it next Saturday. Next Saturday is not going to work. Need free OnlyFans. What the fuck? <laughs> what? JDZ, relax. <laughs> Bro, wait, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I didn't mean literally fuck challenge. Uh, nah, yeah. We will start at, we'll try to start at round two tomorrow. Um, the judges are probably making announcements in the Discord. I'm so sorry, guys. Pain. <sighs> Shout out to Angle and Sevilla and Asian with Hat and Hoff for doing their best to try and solve all this. Just joined what happened. Challenge crashed. And so the bracket's kind of frozen here. 
and the server keeps going in and out so we have to delay until tomorrow unfortunately ah okay let's get our mind off things let's get our mind off things let's just play some edison let's just play some edison let's play some good old-fashioned edison format Yu-Gi-Oh. we need to we need to untilt ourselves we need to untilt ourselves let's just play a game let's just play a match does anyone have a deck suggestion for your boy does anyone have a deck suggestion that they want to see me play Cool Dead Punk says someone should probably take a screenshot. We already did. We already did. We have exported. Psychic Lightsworn. That could be fun. Vayu. Benkai is cool. Dark Magician. Assault Mode. Psychics. I could play Telly Dad. That sounds fun. Let's play Telly Dad. 60 card Lightsworn. How about 30 card Lightsworn? Hmm. Let's play Telly Dad. Let's just play some Teledad. Let's just play some Teledad in Edison format. All right? Teleport Dark Armed, Edison format. I will host a game. No one knows it's me. All right, we're playing against. Good luck, have fun. All right, paper, rock, scissors. All right, I lost. Great, wonderful. Okay, okay. It's cool, it's cool. It's cool. I could have played Grave Keepers. I could have. We're just playing a match to detail to ourselves. Unfortunately, Challenge has crashed. If you're just tuning in, we're just getting untilted. But this hand is good. MTG.melee is what magic players use for tournaments. Good to know. Let's go ahead and just uh, sang and attack. I think this is a pretty safe move. Hopefully, it's not a hamster. It's likely a hamster. Shining Angel. Cool. That's neat. What are we getting off Shining Angels? Probably DD Warrior Lady. This guy's very brained. He's got the Honest Sleeves and the Herald of Orange Light avatar. Man, that is pain. Honest, interesting. Tomorrow I should start early. No respect at all for European players. Bro, what are you talking about? Darth Titus says, what happened to the tournament? Challenge crashed. So, we had to reschedule to tomorrow. I have been insanely respectful to all of the European players. You want me to, like, go out of my way, change the previous tournament scheduling... Make it inconvenient for the people we've scheduled this tournament for. I mean, more than I already have. Priority question mark. On summon, I have effects. Turn heavy storm. This guy's pissing me off. Yeah, like what? Can you still sign up? No, we're going to start from round two. Sangin's going to search me a card. I think Sangin searches for Reaper here. You're not getting up at 5 a.m. to play? Fuck that. 5 a.m.? Yeah. Exactly, yeah. Um, Yeah, we just Reaper poke. This is all we can do to make it work. Honestly. You have Herald of Orange? No Herald of Orange. Alright. What card do we hit? Our opponent's thinking really hard. We hit DD Warrior Lady. Nice. So we know the hand is Honest Heavy Storm. There's really no reason for us to allure into a trap card. We'll just pass. We can save this allure. Get more intel on what we'd rather keep. That's fine. <sighs> Bro.
brutal, man. I'm really bummed. I'm sorry, guys. All right. This guy doesn't know how this works. Book of Moon resolves. Yeah, I don't think, I don't, yeah. Book of Moon resolves, you may continue. You said you rage quit when you played him, by the way, careful, care for tilt. He's you in his graveyard. What's in your graveyard, buddy? You reading Book of Moon? Oh, you cast Book of Moon. You cast Book of Moon. You can't take back plays. That's not how this works. Book of Moon vs. Reaper challenge? Impossible. Well. Alright. Alright. <laughs> Alright. Alright. Never play that guy. <laughs> we'll play this guy. Good luck, have fun. Simply built different. You know what the weird part about it is like, that guy was playing a net deck of me. He was playing my deck. <laughs> and he's being weird to me. Like, bro, you were playing my deck. <laughs> uh, I'm built different with this play. You guys like this play? I'm built different with this play. See? I knew this shit would happen. I knew he would summon Sangin and attack me for 1,000 life points. All right, Zeon. Ooh, that's a good card. What are you gold sark for with this deck? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know what we search. It's always this. All right, what are the chances he has that one guy? Let's take out his back row. Chain book on Sangin. That's fine. I'll attack over his Sangin with my Sangin. You just found out why everyone thinks Fairy sucks? Yeah, that's exactly why. Because people like that will net deck me and then show up and play terribly. All right, he's searching his deck. I'm gonna grab DD Warrior Lady. I don't like that. If I get heavy stormed, I'm done. I am done here if I get heavy stormed. Two DD Warrior Lady decks in a row is kind of crazy. Not what I was expecting. I will de I will bottomless this. Set back row. Set back row. Set another back row. Just one. Okay. Troy says online fucking sucks. I agree. Doing what we can though. Doing what we can. It's gotta be Android. Search. I'll search Gale. I think Gale's actually a good search with this hand. Is this guy playing Gores? He might be. Is this Powerwell Dad? No, it's just Teledad. I'm not playing Powerwell in this build. Wish there were more IRL tournaments next year. Next year, I'm trying to do all of them IRL like this. 
That would be ideal mind control. That makes me sad. Okay. Right, what are we making here then? The Dark Arm Dragon? Stardust Dragon? Okay. Well, we searched Gale, so making Stardust Dragon is stupid from our opponent. We do get to add Dark Arm Dragon to our hand. Do you see Konami promoting Edison between rounds at YCS Dortmund? I didn't see that. That's fire. Someone sent me the link to that. I think we have game, right? Yeah, we have game. We just make Colossal and then Mind Control. Target Stardust. Synchro. Colossal. Special. He conceded there before seeing the mind control. That was weird. Wait, there's a Edison feature right now on the YC. Wait, what the fuck? Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What? What's the link? What's the link? It's pre recorded. I don't even care. There's a feature on stream? What the hell? Yo, what? What is the link? Someone tell me the link. Well, don't tell me the link. Don't type the link, but. Because the link will get banned in the chat. But tell me what the backslash is on Twitch. Konami EU YouTube. Okay, Konami EU YouTube. No way, that's fucking crazy. Is this it? Yu-Gi-Oh card EU? Is this it? They're live right now. Okay. Why see this Dortmund? Okay. Wait. What the fuck? It's only two darks now. Yeah. Oh, what? That's insane! Yo! Wait, that's fucking awesome! Wait, that's fucking awesome! This is huge! Dude, Konami official Edison stream? What? Hype? That's so sick! What? That's so sick. Yo. Shout out Konami EU. I'll subscribe for that. I'll subscribe to them for that. That's so sick. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. Darkrum Dragon, the king of Edison format. I didn't play right now. We got Chaos Sorcerer banished. What the fuck? Wait, was I in the middle of a match? I was. <laughs> I just left this guy hanging. <laughs> Sorry, I got to go. I'm not playing against Salvo, Dad. Get the fuck out of here with that. I'm watching this. Let's go, baby. What's in that guy's graveyard? It's a smashing ground? He has zero cards. Send Plague. Dude, this is sick. This is actually so badass. Casters versus Masters, and they had top players play against the commentary team in between regular rounds. That's sick. What? Dude, this is awesome. What the fuck? You were dead ass while you sleep and you heard Treeborn and you woke up? This is huge. Shapular says this is the biggest Edison stream right now. How many how many viewers do they have right now? Can we see how many viewers? Do we know how many viewers they have? Let's see live chat. This is hype. Joshua Schmidt was on stream earlier with Plant Synchro. Oh, that is so badass, dude. 1,800 people watching this. That's crazy. Where does it say the viewers on YouTube? Does it say it somewhere? I don't see it. Their chat is kind of slow for 1,800 viewers. It says 1,800 on the stream. I don't see it, though. Pretty sure my ma your manager heard me. Hell yeah. Under channel name. 
huh? Oh, play, 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 play. Oh, fuck. I'm just fucking up now, aren't I? Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. In description. In description? It's not showing it for some reason. Show that. Oh, there it is. Yeah, 1799 watching now. Wow. That is so sick. This is so sick. Dude. Actual Konami coverage of Edison format. I fucking told people. I told them. I told them three, four years ago. I told them. I was like, we can do this. I told them we can make it happen. I told them it doesn't matter. Everything that's in your brain. Where's MMF? I'm going to see if MMF can get on call right now. Where's MMF? Where's MMF? Where the fuck is MMF? This is crazy. We need Ghost from the Past, Edison Edition. Hard work pays off. Yeah, dude. Same with you guys. You guys laid the foundation, JDZ. You guys laid the foundation for this to happen. This is crazy. This is so sick. Did I see MBT Engage did an Edison tournament in Pittsburgh? I did see that. Carpath won it. The esports tournament place they ran it at looks really nice for coverage. Yeah, there was there's been a lot of like high production Edison stuff going on right now, which is sick. The production setup at Xanadu is insane. I'm hoping to do something there. This is based as a guy who plays new format way more. Can confirm Edison is not for boomers. Yeah, it's not. It's not for boomers. Edison is for real Yu Gi Oh. Real Yu-Gi-Oh-ers. Okay, hold up. I'm going to see if I can get MMF on the call. Where the fuck is MMF? Dude. Hold on. I got to pull up this DMs from MMF. I have to show you guys. MMF. Are you online? Big emergency. Need you need to call Kappa. Need MMF. Where's MMF? Dude, I literally had a DM with MMF in June about this. June of like, oh my god, I gotta find this. Hold everybody. Hold. Where's MMF? Wait, guess the card. It's literally who's that Pokemon? That's kind of based actually. I like this segment. I like their backdrop, the Pharaoh's backdrop. Even common Caius is five dollars. Let's go. IRL Edison deserves a production value. You kinda hate screen watching dueling book. I agree. I agree, Optimus Prime. IRL RBT IRL Orlando is gonna have much nicer production value. And I'm going to learn a lot for the for the upcoming live streams. This is crazy, though. Guess the card, everyone. It's Pikachu. <laughs> Cap. <laughs> this looks like a... The... What is it called? Springin's Kit. It's Springin's Kit! It's Springin's Kit! I know this card. I actually know this card. I'll type it in their chat. I'll give them the the engagement. Is it not Spring and Skid? Oh, it's branded in high spirits. All right, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving. 
I'm leaving. Ah, <sighs> damn. That was hype. That was actually hype. All right, chatters. Everybody who's still with me. Everybody who is... Still with me. Wait, why are we... Are we on the wrong screen? Am I showing the YouTube thing? The back end of the YouTube thing now? Did OBS break and just no one told me? God damn it. We're supposed to be showing Dueling Book right now. We are stuck in analytics. Why did no one tell me this? Hold on. Hold on. Why did no one... Why did no one tell me this? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> let's run a match. Okay, Enrage Peacock, let's run a match. Let's do it. I'm hosting. We were just vibing in analytics. <laughs> you mentioned it earlier, but it got ran over. What the fuck? When did it when did it happen? <laughs> when did it happen? <laughs> I'm so bad at this, dude. I'm so bad at this game. Numbers are interesting. We could do an analytics stream. I could show you the behind the scenes Edison stuff. Like 20 minutes ago, when I was looking for view count on Konami stream. Oh, it must have been when I accidentally went in full screen. All right, we're playing against Enraged Peacock. You need an empty jar channel. No, we don't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sure. Ask ask uh, Chapel, who runs the edisonformat.com Discord. What do you guys think of my hand? Hand's pretty good. All right, all right, all right. This hand is, uh, it's Doom Caliber time, baby. Confession. Attack mode, attack mode. Damn, that sucks. Can you guys see the gameplay? Can you guys see the game that's happening in front of you right now? Dude, this is heartbreaking. This makes me really sad. I was like geared up to do this RVET. I was ready to order food. I was ready to do just be on for like eight hours. And now I'm just like heartbroken. Ah, fuck me, dude. This matchup seems miserable. Yep. I can't see the live chat. If there's messages I'm missing. Damn, this sucks. What's the move? I guess it's just Gale have. I need to bait the back row somehow. Attack. Hopefully this goes through. Mirror Force. It did not. Sag. Set the Wind Blast past turn. You want to see a big boy obelisk hit the field? Me too. Maybe I'll play an obelisk deck after this. We're just going to play some games. What the fuck is this, man? Sure. Special test tiger. Okay. Priority question mark. Target question mark. What is the target here? Target Secutor. I gotta wind blast it. Traps down, yeah. Guess we just have perfects. I've seen enough. Alright. 
We're going to side out gores, side out tomatoes, side out gold sarks. Compulsory is pretty good. Breaker and Kaiku are decent too, because they're just beaters. Probably side out Treeborn. Actually, Treeborn's okay. Cold Wave might be a little sus. This might not be a Cold Wave matchup, but it might be a Cold Wave matchup. I need to get the Breaker and the Kaiku in the main deck. Dust Shootout, and maybe... Can cut. Yeah, let's just cut Cold Wave. Okay. Fuck it. Fuck it. Oh, this hand sucks. Never mind, it's great. Mm. He says, every time we've played, you've played GB, so it's my turn. It is his turn. It is, turn, it is his turn to Gladiator Beast me. Alas, here we are. Getting Gladiator Beasted in real time. Back row, okay. More back row. So does Tornado that one. Pog. All right, summon Doom Caliber. Tag for my team. It's kind of the best card in this matchup. If it sticks. Oh, that's good. It's so laggy, dude. Dueling Book and Challenge and everything is crashing. Ah. Jeff Bezos did this. Battle phase attack. Sure, take 200. A lot of you guys are probably thinking, like, why not wind blast it? Because then he just plays it again next turn. So there's really no reason to do that. Set back row. Set monster. So we want to hit the... New back row. Yep. Alright. Standby phase. Treeborn comes out. Caius. Activate. Target the monster. Run over the cyber dragon. And pass. We know he's drawing the dead back row because of the wind blast. Hmm. Marmillo. Smashing. That's bad. He really did have Glad that can tag that isn't ready Ari plus a removal spell as his last cards. That's fucking really lucky. But we can still play this game. He's forced to go ready Ari. If we draw a big enough monster, we can run it over. Oh. 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 Never mind. He's letting us keep our Treeborn. That's cool, too. Pretty happy about that one. Actually, quite happy about that one. Target the quarry, hit for 24. Very nice, very nice. Damn, that's tough. Prisma, activate. That's fine. Thoughts on creature swap and quick draw. Sounds like another brick that the deck can't really afford to play. Let's attack. Nice. I quite like 
Telly Dad. I think it's a fun deck. I may build it. I need to get an emergency teleport. Should I get a collector's rare or ultimate? Ultimate rare. Which one should I get? It's fine. Call the haunted. We got dust tornado. Chain to the call in case of traps done. Ah, who knew? Drawing dust tornado versus gladiator beast is good. You think getting an ultimate rare emergency teleport is the move? Could be. Do you think we bring in Cold Wave going second? It seems pretty strong. I'll try it over return. Everyone is saying, literally everyone has said ultimate rare. That's crazy. That's crazy that there's only one vote for the collector's rare. I really like the collector's rare. I think it looks kind of nice. <laughs> Ulties all day. All right. Maybe I was supposed to side out Sangin. Is that a morphing jar? I guess we'll find out. No reason not to do it blind. See if this is good. Bottomless. Okay. Normal Doom Caliber. See if this is good. Attack. Deep Prison. So it is a jar. All right. Set, set, pass. Do I think ultras will accumulate value as Edison continues to grow? Yes. I think everything in Edison format will accumulate value. Allure of Darkness. I will play that. Two. Not the best. Banner Sangin. I want to set more, but I don't want to play into stupid geysers, so... Let's pass. If it's Hoplimus, like let's say it's Hoplimus set, and he like sets best Diari, I don't want to play into that. Okay, now I will set more. Maybe setting Etelli's wrong. Broke Boy Edison Gaming. Gladiator Beast Laquari, I'll go bottomless. If he traps down, I'll chain bottomless. Okay, that worked. Doom Caliber Pog. Normal Doom Caliber. Please resolve. Fucking bitch. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said E-Telly. I'll pass. Damn, everyone is about that ultimate rare. That's crazy. I guess the collector's rare don't look as good in English. That's a good draw. Please. E-call? Bruh. I'll just bottom watch this. He has trap stun. I'll chain dust on his other back row. Chain Wabaku. Okay. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I'm pretty happy about this circumstance though. Because he goes Geyserus here. Yep. He won't be able to tag out his geyseris because we'll chain e -Telly. Chain e -Telly, Special Creeborns. And then he won't be able to banish our Treeborn. So, because he can't make... Um, you gotta shuffle. He can't make... Uh, he can't go Darius. He can't make the guy... 
We're gonna lose our Creebon's end of turn. Never mind, he has the Smashing Ground. That's really ugly. That's very bad. Now he can make Heraklinos if he wants to. Which Heraklinos is gonna be very difficult to answer. But he can't make Heraklinos and Ready RES. So he either has to go Ready RE a quest. I think it's Ready RE a quest. Grab back the best Yari. Dude, this guy is just not respecting Treeborn Frog. I'm going to top deck Caius and I'm going to win. If you're doing this, you might as well just get back the... Get Darius, you know? Okay. This is bad because he can geyser us, us but... At least it forces him to do it. We have another turn, I suppose. Fuck, this is annoying. I maybe should have held the emergency teleport. I was pretty certain his set card was Morphing Jar, and it just wasn't the entire time. You hate ultis. Why? Now here he could go Darius Laquari and make Heraklinos. I don't even know. I think we lose this match. He's not going Darius. That's so crazy. I have Treeborn in the graveyard. I'm going to draw Akaius, and it's going to win. I fucking hate this game. <laughs> I have to do this to not die. I have one more draw step. Please give me the guy that I need. One time for the fans. Just go into the same ones and make Heraklinos, please. Please just make Heraklinos. Please. Yes. Darius, bring out a quest. Darius, bring out the quarry. Make Heraklinos. Please just do it. Please just make Heraklinos and end my suffering. End my eternal suffering. Please just close things out. Please just make Heraklinos. Thank you. You got a shuffle. That's funny. That's also funny. Let's get that last card out of his hand. He may just give me this. He may just let me have it and take 3,000. He should just let me have it, yeah. I meant to hate. GG's. GG's. <sighs> Never punished. Never punished. Never punished. All right, now what? Now what deck are we playing, chat? Now what are we doing? This has uh, been a tilting day. I'm going to check the Discord real quick, see if there's anything I need to respond to.
Let me just make sure everything's all right. I guess people are upset. <sighs> Which is fair. Do I have any event tops? Yeah, but they're dated. Like just regionals and shit. No YCSs. Nothing I'd consider like... I feel like a YCS or a SJC top is like... That's what you want. Like, that's like, that's something you can say like, oh, I did this. You know what I mean? Once you're in that tier of player, it's like, it's a different level of play. If that makes sense. Have I seen the Chaos Plant Power Tool deck? Yeah, I built the Chaos Plant Power Tool deck. <laughs> yes. Sag. Well, this is tough. It's been a tough day, guys. It's been a tough day. Damn. Just looking at the sad bingo card. This is depressing. I guess we're just playing depressing Yu-Gi-Oh! Until I decide to leave. <sighs> Why don't I cover the YCS even with com commentary? Because they're not streaming it. They're just doing it in between the rounds. Oh man, this is depressing. This is what it was like before RBET. It was just me sitting here looking at Edison decks. You DM'd me a deck on Discord if I want to play it. All right, I'll take a look. Wait, who who are you, James? What is your Discord username? D is it the Plasma deck that someone just sent me? Oh, okay, that's JX89. Yeah. Uh, I played a deck like this recently, like very similar to this recently. And I was like trying to win a game with it and it just never won a game. It was like very similar to this. Or 
Where's MMF? God damn it. Pain. Thank you for your membership, Cool Dead Punk. It means a lot. I'll put that into the prize pool tomorrow. Can you send me a jank list? No. I don't want to play jank. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not in the mood to play jank. just want to play something that isn't depressing. What isn't depressing? Maybe let's just play some fairies, dude. Let's play some fucking fairies. Let's just play some fairies. Where's my fairy list? Is it this? This might not be it. Oh, yeah, this looks close-ish. I wanna play Book of Moon. I wish there was space for Book of Moon in this deck. There just isn't. Maybe I could play it in the side. All right, let's try this. God damn, dude. I feel bad. Fury and look, have fun. Okay, we are playing fairies. Edison format fairies. That's what's happening right now. Opening hand is very interesting. This is an example of an opening hand where it's best to kind of chill. We want to keep the Herald life. We want to keep the Torrential for later. We want Brain Cyber Valley for later. So we just take the first hit. Here. That's the play. Is just take the first hit. A lot of people would deoc try to blind hit here, but it's never the move. It's never the move because if you miss, then your hand falls apart. It doesn't do anything. Uh, you want to wait till you've brain valleyed to summon deoc because then you'll have the valley banish and your deoc will be guaranteed live. Okay, this is pretty good for us. We can get the perfect info here, which is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna dust shoot them, get the perfect info. What the fuck is this? Which of these do we want to face the least? Probably Dark Arm Dragon, right? Now nah, let's take DD Warrior Lady. Giga Plant, Dark Arms, Torrential, Mark, Smashing. I've never seen Smashing Ground in a Giga Plant deck. That actually makes zero sense. Unless you're like afraid of Titanial, but that just doesn't make any sense to play Smashing Ground in a Giga Plant deck. Flip Mystic Tomato. Beautiful. That's exactly what I was hoping for here. We're not going to flip Legacy. I don't want him to main phase two sack for Giga Plant because I don't want him to get a plant in the graveyard for his Mark of the Rose. Perfect. So now we go Normal Valley. Brain control, take the tomato, and I think we win. Straight up. Banish, oops, that's supposed to be face up. Banish, banish. We could have attacked with the tomato first, but life points is not how we're winning this game, I don't think. We should have attacked with the tomato, actually. Uh, set call, because if we herald, we'll pitch Christia. I guess I can set Torrential too because why the fuck not really? We'll pass. Next turn I can Alchemist and start hitting.
Getting the plant banished is really good for us. Gorus, damn, I'm bad. All right, Alchemist, activate. Banish the top card, battle phase, hit for 18. Pass turn. Alchemist is never a card you want to smash in ground. Slightly better deck with slightly worse player or slightly worse deck with slightly better player. Always better player in Edison. Because I don't think that there's a big difference in the deck power. He's actually going to smash my Alchemist. Okay, let's add back the Cyber Valley to our hand. Cyber Valley to my hand. Set to pass. All right. Ooh, that's a good draw. He has Torrential. We know he has Torrential, so I guess just summon Honest Attack. Oh, we'll go main one. He could have Torrential. He could Torrential me here. He's going to Torrential. Okay. I'll go ahead and... Uh, we could call Honest, but then call gets locked. But I don't think it matters if... Actually, I think it does matter. I think it's just pass. We'll figure it out next turn. I don't want to call yet. I want to Herald pitch Christia, then call Christia. I think that's the best play for us. I want to play my cards, basically. They're just going to pass again. Draw for turn, we hit bottomless. I am in a legacy now, because I just want to draw a threat. There we go. Never Spencer. <laughs> Literally, yeah. All right, Warrior Lady, 15s. Bottomless Trap Hole. Um, now we call Alchemist, because we have something banished. Activate, banish the top card, hit for 18. Main phase two, set two. Oh, hold up. I think. I think we just compulse the track. Pass turn. Uh, let's compulse the track now. This is perfect timing. You're literally at your regional waiting for the time wizards to play fairy. Hell yeah. Well, that's good. This matchup seems really good for us. Set monster pass. Draw for turn. Space Typhoon. That's a really good draw. So we can space our own call, pop the alchemist, add back the warrior lady. Which could be cool. You went back and watched the match from your... You didn't go ready, are you? Because you had crow. Oh, you had crow. That's why. That's pretty good. Then you just had me on all angles, enraged. That was a good match. That was a good match. I had fun that match. Okay, we got options here. We got some cool options here. So, the big option that I'm thinking about here is like... Go Bryonic, pitch Christia, bounce call. That's option number one. Option number two is we just attack. Option number three is we just switch the Alchemist to defense and vibe. Let's just activate Alchemist and see what's up. Maybe we hit something good. Uh, we could Valley banish both. I think I'll just pass. I don't think we're really at danger of anything happening to us. I think the set monster is likely Dandelion. I could have summoned Cyber Valley, but I didn't want to risk him crashing Dandelion and then brain controlling my Cyber Valley. Or Mark of the Rose, my Cyber Valley. 
I think the set card is Dandelion, though. Your username is gladv65803. Wait, I think I recognize you. That's funny. Set back row pass. Nova Summoner. Now we win. Because we just typhoon the back row. Chain typhoon targeting. Bottomless shirt, that's fine, doesn't matter. Uh, normal. Schmink row. What was my pojo? I think it was my name, but I forget. GG. GG. Let's go next. All right. Cool. Dude, this deck is so fucking broken. My opponent had it all and just couldn't play. This deck is so fucking broken. Alright, Taiki the Ghost Destroyer seems good. Compulsory seems good. Book seems good. That's it. That's all we need. Just gotta be careful of Lone Fire and a Giga Plant. If this is a power tool deck, we kinda want Cyber Dragon. Breaker probably also has applications. Bryo and Christia go together like peas and carrots. Yeah, Bryonic and Christia is like it's so broken. <laughs> Side out the soul release. We're citing in Kaiku, so our graveyard control changes. I generally side out Raiko, but I think he has applications here. Doesn't seem like a card trooper matchup. Because I don't really want to be attacking the sets. We're just trying to set up Brown at Christia. Side out of Nova Summoner. I don't fucking know. I literally don't know what this deck is going to side versus me. Dust Tornado is probably good. Like, it's probably better than like some of this garbage. Is this an honest matchup? Dude, whatever. I'll set out Gores. I'll actually set out Gores because I don't think I'm getting attacked. I'm going to keep it really minimal going into this one. We'll just keep it really minimal. What happened to the tourney? Dude, fucking challenge broke. Fuck challenge. All my homies hate challenge. So, we're rescheduling it for tomorrow. I've got to figure out some alternative solutions. Turn one power tool dragon would be very bad for me. That being said, it does not look like he has turn one power tool dragon, so we take those. So you want to set Raikou first here, and then Space Typhoon to play around Dust Shoot. Cool. And I think we just want to set compulsory pass. Week long RBT? Hell no, dude. That sounds like a nightmare to organize. Someone said needle ceiling. He had maybe one monster in play that entire game. I don't think needle ceiling is really where we want to be here. All right, let's blow it up. Chain dust, chain compulsory, mill three. Set Raiko, set Mirror Force, pass the turn. Cool. Set multiple back row. 
trap does shoot? Really? You, he sets trap does shoot the turn I have a monster in my hand. And he doesn't wait for me to flip the Raikou into it first. Of course. Of course. That's really unfortunate. Well. That means his other one is chainable too, right? Like it just has to be. Let's hit it. Yep. L3. Okay, we have four fairies, so it's just a matter of time. Let's turn. Eventually, I'm going to draw a Christia, and eventually, I'm going to win. Don't need to play any Gores. Don't need to play any anything. I'm just going to draw a Christia, and that's going to be that. That's it. Sangin, okay. Sure. What a fucking draw, dude. What a fucking draw. <laughs> Holy shit, this card is ridiculous. Cyber Valley, ladies and gentlemen. That was insane. That was probably like the best possible draw. <laughs> This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is literally the best deck. I've been dust shooted and space typhooned three times. That was nuts. I love this deck so much. It's so broken. It's so stupid, because what does he do? What does he do? Oh, I guess we have Heavy Storm, what? He had f all of it, all of it. Heavy Storm, DD Warrior Lady, okay. But then what, you kill my Alchemist, I just get my Christia back. Like, how do you win? <laughs> what is he even thinking about here? What what is there to think about? Just get DD Warrior. Lady. You can't beat the Christia that is in play. Get the DD Warrior. Lady. Are you gonna get Twilight Rose Knight? You need a Twilight Rose Knight right now, with a Christia in play. You're gonna get a Twilight Rose Knight. What? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> All right, it looks like we found the line, folks. Pay the life points. Okay. Christia gets banished. Sure. It's fine. No big deal. Pass the turn. Alright. No big deal. Right? He's out all of his spell and trap removal. He hates back row, but it's the monster he loses to. Now what? Now what do you do, kind sir? Now what do you do? Literally now what, uh, JPEG? How do you play this game? How do you proceed? Lone Fire Blossom. We're gonna go get ourselves Giga Plant. It's gonna get bottom list. To play around Supervise. Oh, 
Titanial, it's also going to get bottom list. Pass turn. That's a good draw. We'll just pass again. The reason we have the Dialk set is to play around Mark of the Rose. Brain control. T set, okay. Well, that's a good draw. Set that. Pass turn. Next turn we have lethal. I'm telling you guys, this deck is the best deck of the format. It just does you don't need to do anything. You just kind of just sit there and it's like your opponent just will lose the game. I don't have to I don't have to think. I don't have to like sequence properly, and now I just win. I straight up win. Watch this. Watch this shit. Call Herald. Special summon. Oh, would you look at that? We're back. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. He knew I had bottomless, lol. Did he know? Does it matter that he knew? Does it does any of this even matter? None of this even matters, right? Bronic. Bounce a monster. Battle phase. I have Solon, so. It just doesn't matter. Nothing really matters when you play fairies. This deck is so broken. <laughs> it's just so broken. What the fuck? What are you thinking about there? GG's. GG's. It was never close. It was never close. All right. This deck is broken. People are always like doubting on it, but you literally just don't need to do anything. You just kind of just chill and then you win. It reminds me of blue white control in Magic the Gathering. You just do nothing and then Christia happens and then it's like, oh, there's a planeswalker and you can't out it, and the game just ends. It's literally insane. That's what I would equate Christia to. Christia's like Jace the Mind Sculptor. Like, when it hits play, it's just like over. It's just over. Man, I'm really bummed. I'm really bummed. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Thanks for everyone who's in the chat who's watching me play that match. We gotta play another match. We just gotta keep it going. We gotta keep the entertainment flowing for everybody. I'm depressed. That was really depressing. All right. Twenty-four hour stream. Meben. Good luck, have fun, Meben. Do I remember the blue white control list with blue white WX with X draw, draw X cards? Oh, Sphinx's Revelation, yes. Yes. That card is really cool. Is the Iron Wall dream real in. What? Oh, we're playing against frogs. This is a hard matchup, game one. Yeah, this matchup shouldn't be good, game one, but we might be all right here. We'll just set two and pass. You played fairy round one and you got dogged by Vayu. That's a matchup you really have to practice. Is book not worth maining anymore? I don't know. Sure. This is a weird move from the opponent. I 
I feel like going for double dupe into two back row is sus. Oh, he's going for single dupe. Do we drop Chag here? I think we do. Just because if we can steal one of the dupes, it's kind of nice. Give me Ryko. Unfortunate. Give me Ryko. Unfortunate. All right, I guess we pass. Finn says, is RVT canceled for real? The online one is. I guess I should redo the title. Hold up. Let me... Uh... There we go. Title's changed. The Orlando is still happening next week. Rise of Target Trigodia. I'll chain bottomless. So that one pass from us. Yeah, this matchup's not great, game one. We just got cut off a draw step. We needed that draw step. Would have been much better if he kiased us, actually. For us, better for us. Drew Heavy Storm for turn. That's annoying. It's weird he didn't summon Treeborn, but I guess it makes sense. Didn't want to clog the board. I will summon Trigodia, like. No reason not to. Just shoot. Ah, uh, let's just go next. This matchup gets so much easier post board. Because I don't have all this dead shit in my deck. Summon Dialk to fuel return. I just blind miss once with Dialk. And then... It's just not worth playing that out. Because I'm bored. I would play it out if I was in tournament. Because you can still win from that position. But I'm just being lazy. Um, more reciting. Air Force out. Nova Seminar out. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I'm just being lazy. I just don't want to play a pre game, pre board game against frogs. Let's see what Alchemist can blind hit. That's so unfortunate. Let's see if he has Soul Exchange. Soul Exchange would be worst case scenario. There's Swap Frog, okay. Send Treeborn, okay. Bounce, pass. Draw for turn, it's Shining Angel. Activate Alchemist. Wonderful. Battle phase. Kaiku hits for 18. So you have the Fader, the Gores. Activates. Manage the Treeborn. Hit for another 18. So he probably has back or removal. So I'm going to set Call of the Haunted. And not set my Solemn. I'm going to try to bait his back row removal because his hand is Swap Frog plus five unknowns and none of them are battle stoppers. So Soul Exchange, sure. Sack for Kaius, target Kaiku, sure. We take a thousand. It's not a big deal. Pass the turn, draw for turn, it's bottomless. Okay. So... What's the play? This is a weird one. We know he has Swap Frog. Oh, 
normal angel. I'll crash. I'm gonna crash a couple of times just to thin my deck. Um, then attack this 900, banish both. His turn, he's gonna go swap, summon, attack. I think we're just accepting Gores is going to be dead. We have four fairies. Hmm. This could have been a mistake, but... I think this is positionally the best for us. He probably has a handful of frogs. Or monarchs. Because he did nothing to stop, like, the Kaiku swing. Either that or he has spell and trap removal, which is why I needed to set the Solemn. I was thinking about not setting the Solemn, and then if he goes Heavy Storm, my chain. This is okay. I need to draw Christian next turn, though. Or soonish, really. Battle phase attacks, I will call Dimensional Alchemist. Balance tree or swap frog, pass a turn. Back row is interesting. Christia, never lucky. Okay. So I think we're just gonna time walk him. It might've been bad to crash so we're gonna go alchemist activate there's the top card attack for 18 he has to use his back row this turn enemy controller to defense okay set legacy pass Here comes Treeborn. Sack for Caius, target alchemist. I think I saw him that. And then we can go Alchemist, Alchemist attack, and then we just bottomless the next Monarch and we probably win. Is the title real or clickbait? Bro. Yeah. Um, let me just adjust it. There we go. There we go. You know what? You get the you get a new title. Special Evil Guy Instant Fusion. What is this amounting to? Sure. That's the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen. I'll bottomless this. That's going to destroy my alchemist in a new chain. We're going to add back Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer. We know he has Swap Frog in hand. Both his Treeborns are now banished. I'm surprised he didn't banish his evil guy instead of the Treeborn. That just seems like a mistake. He's going to attack. I'm going to activate Legacy. I'm going to draw one, and then I'm going to drop Gores after taking 300, and he lost the game. So, cool. Awesome. Wonderful. 
but no, it's hand to swap frog, one unknown. And we drew Christia. So, yeah, we're going next. What card is my DB avatar? I actually don't know. I just kind of like the art. Going second, what do we change? Nothing. Kaiku was insane that game. My opponent played that game weird too. He just played it wrong. I think this matchup is probably good post board, but Pingu? Pingu, interesting. Strato search evil guy. All right. What does that mean? All right, let's just blind hit. Let's just blind hit. Dude, you've got to be kidding me. That's so unlucky. Ah, that's so dumb. That's literally I've missed every single alchemist hit this entire match. That's so dumb. Do I crash? Nah. We'll just accept it. Pass the turn. Second time in a row, literally hitting a one of. That's so dumb. We're gonna compulsory the stratos. Just Joey says, there's gotta be a better way to run these tournaments that isn't so janky. Someone tell him what it is. I please, someone tell me, yeah. Just Joey, do you have any suggestions? I would love if you had suggestions, but Oh, this is everything I ever wanted. This is everything I ever wanted. This is everything I ever wanted. I'm so happy this is happening right now. This was my way back into the game. This was my way back. We're so back, baby. We're so fucking back. We're so fucking back. Meben. We're so fucking back. We're so fucking back. Someone said challenge was supposed to be replaced by smash GG. Not exactly. What do we take in here? I guess there's a no Stratos. No Gord. Right, no, it's gotta be Stratos. Econ Sol X2 Miracle Riza. Course. We're so fucking back, baby. We're so fucking back, dude. <laughs> We're so fucking back. We're so fucking back. Miracle Fusion, okay. So there's the miracle getting used. 
for 2,500 points. Double Solex Econ in the thing. Okay. Call of the Haunted. That's a good one. Yeah. It's just T set. Pass the turn. Battle phase. Attack. Activate. Blank all future miracles. Ideally. Pass turn, draw your gores. Didn't they activate upstart? I don't think they did this game. Well, they did, didn't they? Yeah, I should have been 1,000 1, higher. Uh, never gained off upstart. Nice catch. Uh, or did I get hit with a swap frog? I don't think I did. Oh, yeah, I got, they upstarted. Uh, shit, man. Let's just pass. Drago favors us, I think, because they'll have to either commit or discard. We can't attack them. Like, we can't call Dialk attack because then they drop Gores and then we lose. So, we have to play a long game with Christia spam. Okay, this is annoying. Because it's like real pressure. Uh, that's like 1800. Subathon? We could do a subathon. I'd be on board for that. Oh my god, we're so fucking back, baby. We're so fucking back. Call. Bring out Alchemist. Activate. Banish top card. It's Tregodia. Normal Summon Kaiku. Battle Phase. Crash Alchemist into Guy. Add back. Honest or Tregodia, chat? Cause he's gonna go Gores run over the Kaiku attack directly. We want honest. We want honest. Eighteen hundred direct. I should have maybe taken the Gores earlier. Activate Kaiku. Get both Treeborns. There's a the Gores. Someone said track. So here's what I think is gonna happen. He's gonna summon the token. He's gonna attack the Kaiku. He's gonna attack me directly. I'm gonna. Drop Gores, and then I'll have Gores token plus Honest to reversal, or I'll be able to double tribute for Christia to reversal. We just have to be kind of careful because he does have that enemy controller, which is a problem for us. Like he can econ sack the token and then do something that way. But I think this is his plan. He can still Monarch the Gore's main too, but I need two threats, you know. He drew the second miracle. Oh, okay. Uh, you can't. Kaiku. Yeah. It's still very bad for us, but... Nice try. Okay, tax for 900. There's our Kaiku. Tax for 1800 actually gives us the Gorse, which I'm going to use. Uh... Pain. I shouldn't have conceded game one. I probably could have still won it. If I drew the right cards. Enemy controller take cores, sack cores for malicious edge. Okay. Well, we know he has miracle fusion. There goes his enemy controller. Um, punished? Gores. P 
probably should have used his miracle. So his double soul X miracle one unknown. All right. Hopefully it's not brain control, I guess. If it's brain control, we lose. Dude, if we just hit turn one with Alchemist, we would have crushed this game. He has Book Miracle. Yeah, now we lose. His last card was a Christia out. It's pretty lucky. We have to set honest pass. And now we lose. If he summons, whatever it is. He has to attack first with Ocean to mess us up. No, he's not going to. GG's. GG's. Last card book was good. I should have played out the first game, but I was bored. I think I still could have won from that position, especially game one, when he doesn't have a lot of Christie outs. That's why it goes to show, never concede your games. I was I was just teaching you guys a lesson, really, is what I was doing. Kappa. Bruh. This has been depressing. This has been truly depressing. I'm getting angry people in my DMs. Sag. It's tough. It's tough out here. Nothing I can do. It's out of my control. Pain.
What now? Run some black wings? Yeah, black wings could be fun. We could play some black wings. But then we'd probably bleed more viewership. <sighs> Kappa. Not that I care at this point. It's kind of tough, man. It's been a tough day. What have you guys been up to today? Oh, you were wanting to play in the tournament? Oh, my bad. <laughs> Shit. Welly Dad? We could play Welly Dad. We play Ancient Gears. I want to play Ancient Gears. Ancient Gears sounds kind of fun. We play X-Sabers. I actually wanted to play some X-Sabers. Aliens? No thanks. We played D&D &D for the first time in ages. That was awesome. Let's play Ancient Gears. We'll do one match Ancient Gears. And then we'll switch off. We'll have fun. Cool. Losing the rock, paper, scissors. That's so funny. Now what? Well, we can resolve dust shoot. We should probably set break, set dust shoot. Pass. He's going to 50 50 us. He's going to hit the Rigeki break. We are going to get to resolve this dust shoot, which is good. So we're going to be able to see what's up. Looks like he's on quick draw. Hmm. What do we take here? I think it's Tragodia. Book, Caius, Cutie. It could have been quick draw. But I have compulsory for drill, so. Yeah, see, Sangin doesn't matter. We could draw Ancient Gear Beast or Doom Caliber. So we have six draws that clear this. So you get rid of Trag or Caius. Yeah, that's what we did. Okay, so Gear Frame Search. Get Fortress. What is he typing? Oh, he's probably just typing my hand. So if we attack Sangin, he takes 800. He searches Dandelion. We could also hit him for an extra 3,000 this turn, but I think we wait on that. Yeah, I think we just hit Sangin. Force him to search Dandy. He goes pitch Dandy for quick draw. Um, get two tokens. And then... He could also search Raiko, which wouldn't be the worst search here. But if he searches Raiko, he risks losing next turn if I draw a machine. No, because he has book. He doesn't lose next turn if, if I draw, even if I draw a machine. So he, he should search Raiko here. Because he has Ryko book. You think Farfo is playing Roundex Gear Frogs? That's cool. 
Again, I have issues with Farfa. I hold grudges. That's one thing I notice. I hold grudges. I, I feel like when people do fucked up shit to me, it's like, okay, I'm just going to remember that forever now. Like, you know, search Lone Fire. Hmm. Not really what I was expecting him to search. But, might work. Same, you also all grudges, yeah. It's just like, okay. What did Farfa do? He told me he was going to restream one of the RBETs, and then he never did. And there was a few other things, like, that happened behind the scenes. Where it was just, like, really annoying. Set book. No set book, okay. Well, now we have games, so. Kind of a mistake on his part there. He should have set the book. He's typing the hand, but he's not playing around it, like. This is 73. Did he draw Gores? He had one draw step to hit Gores. Did he draw it? Why didn't he set the book? I don't... That was weird. I don't know why he didn't set the book. Anyway, Grandma's good in this matchup. Yeah, exactly. Enraged. Exactly. I know exactly what you mean. I think Torrential Needle Ceiling are pretty good in this matchup. He's definitely going to be on Cyber Dragon, so Bottomless is pretty useful. Kaiku can be useful, but it's not the most useful. My body as a shield stops Raikou if they flip it. Gores is okay in this matchup, too. So is Dust Tornado, just to hit their Dust Tornadoes. I think this is a matchup where I don't like Regeki Break so much. I do still like Compulsory, but I don't like Regeki Break as much. So we're going to go out with the Regeki Breaks. I think Limiter and Megamorph are... They're kind of hard to force through in this matchup. I think Brain Control is not very good in this matchup. So I think it's like one of Limiter or Megamorph. It's probably Megamorph. And then I think... Um, Dust Tornado is pretty good in this matchup. Like, I think just having Dust Tornadoes versus the turn one set Raikou is pretty good. I'm not sure where to slot them in. I think it's like... Maybe over Trunade? Maybe over... Call? Maybe over a Fortress? Let's see how this goes. Yeah, it was just weird. He was like, he like was like, can I restream your event? All this shit. Um, and I was like, yeah, please do. That's really sick. And I was like, I'll shout you out and everything. So I like shouted him out. And then he, the day of the event, I was like, here's the link. Here's everything, you know? And he just like sent me a bunch of Sag emojis. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And then he, um, he posted a video that was like frog related the same day. And I was like, bro, it was like ribbit something, like RBET something. And I was like, that's so, that's such a, that's such leech behavior, you know? All right, let's see what it is. Space Typhoon, okay. Cool. Let's make that Chimera Tech. Seems like a liability. Gear frame, activate. Get the fortress. Battle phase, 1800, 2000. Ah, uh, yeah, I was just 2000. Okay, and then uh, gear frame equip. Pass the turn to play around Cyber Dragon because he definitely plays it.
。那我。Just admit a defeat. All right. Jeez. Did we have OTK? Not through Gore's trag. And I don't think we had it. The base. I didn't think we had it through Space Typhoon or through a potential back row there. I what I could have done. Yes, we did have a potential OTK where it was special Cyber Dragon. Contact fuse, um, normal gear frame, search fortress, heavy storm, blow up our own gear town, special gear dragon, special summit fortress. We did have an OTK, but if the back row stopped us and if he had Gorse Trag, it was not safe to go for it. So I went for the safer line because we can basically force him to play into this indestructible Chimera tech. And then once he plays his next cards, like we, this is a, a more natural line towards winning the game positionally. We had an OTK that we could have gone for, but it would have got stopped by Space Typhoon, and it would have been an overcommitment into an opposing Cyber Dragon. So that's why we didn't do it. And also would have been an overcommitment into Gores and Trag. That was fun. Let's play another one. I don't know if that makes sense, but... Furman. Good luck, have fun. Paper. Paper. I was just having a tough day, man. At least we get to go first. Gear frame, search fortress. This hand is fucking insane, by the way. You're greedy, so you would have gone hard into it. There's really no reason to. I mean, you win anyway. I love this deck. Oh my god. What the hell is this? Well, we have to take Phantom, right? Oh, if we take Greffer, he can't do anything, right? Greffer. That's Phantom. Spark. That's work. Creator. Nora. Wave storm. Okay. Do we win next turn? Oh, you got a shuffle. Oh, okay. Thumbs up. Thank you, thank you. I missed it. Do I? I missed it. Uh, yeah. He could wave here. That wouldn't be the weirdest. I think it's just... Send everything. Greffer off the top gets him to Norlaris, but he'll have no follow up. And he'll be at 800. And we have a lot of reborns to top deck for the fortress. So. Yeah. It needs to be Greffer off the top, basically. Otherwise, we're going to game two. He had a turn one Norlaris hand, but he went second. So there's that. Kaiki the Ghost Destroyer. Torrential, Needle Ceiling, Bottomless, all probably okay. Heavy Storm, Trunade, Typhoon can all come out. Gorge is probably okay. Let's just keep it simple. Actually, Megamorph is probably bad. We'll swap that for 
scores, and then I'll swap. I'm not sure. That's pretty much it. This matchup should be good for us. Technically. Because we have a lot of ways to just interact. We have a ton of ways. We have at least one, two, eight ways, nine, ten, thirteen ways to interact with Norlaris play. So this should be a good matchup. It might not be, but going second if he just Norlaris is me here. At least we have Fortress in the grave. But Machina Force being in the hands not great. I think this is a, I think this is a good hand though. Like this hand will win. Pitch special dark greffer or no normal greffer activate. Okay, that's fine. This would be such an expensive max rarity deck. Are you talking about the ancient gear deck or the Norlaris deck? Let's go gear frame search. Activate. Go get fortress. The whole point of force to pitch is to pitch it off fortress. Yeah. So like the reason it's bad to have it in hand is if he went turn one or Laris, then top deck gear frame doesn't get us to force to bring back fortress. That's why I said it was bad to have in hand. Um, if that makes sense. There's really no reason not to full send it here. He now has live dark armed, which is annoying, but we have compulsory. He can still you know, have decree, but whatever. I maybe shouldn't have equipped there because if I want to compulsory my own monster, yeah, I should have not, whatever. You need the little machine no ones to summon it, right? Summon what? Force? Yeah, you can't summon force. We can never summon this card. It's literally just a brick to search off gear frame to rebot. It's like a monster reborn that we can search basically. Here comes monk. Um, okay, let's chill. Pitch spell. There goes Trunade. Yeah, there's no reason to compulsory the monk priority. No? Alright, I'll compulse it. You can priority activate Phantom. But he's saying no, so. He could priority target Norlaris. His viewing is extra deck. He can make a six star here. None of them win him the game, though. So that's it. That should be the game. He didn't have anything for my back row. What is his back row then? Call of the Haunted, maybe? I wonder what his back row is. Honestly, Force is stupidly bad. No, it's pretty good. I mean, it's just a reborn. You can search off gear, gear frame. Like, imagine Force has is a spell card, right? Imagine it's a spell card that you can search with gear frame that says, Monster Reborn, a Machina Fortress from your graveyard. Like, that's a pretty good effect. That's all it says, though. It doesn't say anything else. Ignore all the other text on the card. Yeah, it's just a monster reborn. And a tutorable monster reborn is like not. It's not that bad. Stack for plague, okay. Where are we going with this though? What is this doing for you? Bionic. Okay, this is not. This is not a winning line. So he bounces both fortress. Phantom's on top of the deck. He shouldn't attack. But he's going to. 
is an eight man going? There might be one happening in the Discord. I'm just playing randoms. He's now dead on board. So there's that. And now it's like even more confirmed. And yeah, we'll just Brownick, Christian Caliber. Oh, it says man's tagged. Yeah. I drew insane in these games. GG's. I think I could have dealt like 16,000 damage that game. Offered a rematch against Norlaris? <laughs> Miss me with that shit. All right. All right, that was tough. Tough day. Tough day. I'm feeling really disheartened. Do you think I should continue playing, guys? Or do you think I should end stream? What do you guys think? My heart is like... Sag. Pain, suffering. Someone said play. Keep going to distract myself. Jinzo returner action. Alright. Alright. Let's keep playing. Let's play a few more matches. Let's play a few more matches. The ancient gear deck was fun. You said this would be an expensive deck to max out. Would it? How expensive would it be? It doesn't look that expensive. What's the most expensive card in this deck? Not counting like, I'm not counting Mattel Cyber Dragon or like Shonen Jump Doom Caliber. I'm talking about like accessible rarities. What's the most expensive card? Probably Ulti First Cyber Dragon. But like, what's the next most expensive card? I don't think anything in this deck is real. Like Terraforming Ulti is probably like 60, 70 bucks. Brain Control Ulti is probably like 100-ish, 200-ish. I don't know how much ulti brain control is. Does anyone know how much that is? Super trap dust shoots probably expensive. You thought it played ancient gear golem? Oh, it doesn't. Ulti first ancient gear beast. How much is that? How much is the ulti first ancient gear beast? That can't be that much, can it? I don't know if this deck is that expensive. It might be. The ulti beasts are high, but not as high as Golem. Mm. I know Super Compulsory is like weirdly expensive. It's like 80 or something. If you were to max max rarity, yeah. I'm going to keep playing with this deck. This deck is fun. 
This deck just crushes people. Fucking hell. Good luck, have fun. Kapul's gonna be crazy in the rarity collection. Is it getting reprinted as a collector's rare? I'll use the dragon deck. I could play the dragon deck. He said, we'll turn off my stream now. Appreciate that. I could play dragons after this. pass getting reprinted in like five rarities are we getting in the ultimate rare one because that one's really clean the ocg ultimate one looks very good like every other card in the set it's gonna be wild hell yeah oh never mind show my hand I need to just take Beast here. I was gonna take Fortress. Probably should have taken Beast. He doesn't realize I can summon Beast. I think I win the game. Pretty sure. We're gonna grab Mausoleum though. We're gonna grab Gear Town. Grab Mausoleum. Yeah, just set. Set, set. We get double gear dragon. Flip mausoleum. Pay a thousand. Normal beast. Battle phase. Beast attack. Beast negate. Hit for six thousand. He should have taken beast. That was a mistake. Olden says wasted a thousand life points. Whatever. Doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna solemn his next play and win the game anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Someone played this versus you with gadgets in the side. Interesting. I wonder why they sided the gadgets. That seems terrible. I don't know why he didn't take Beast. That was just crazy. Oh, he's playing this. That resolves. Grabs Fortress. But now what? I could have just saw him the gear frame, honestly. Yeah, let's just saw him that. Yeah, we win. Enter battle. Okay. Gear Dragon attacks. He can't activate cards. Cool. Machina Mirror Match. But he's playing like the anti meta version. This one seems... Dude, shout out Konami. Konami's the realist, actually. They get a bad rap, I feel. But they're actually kind of doing the most for us lately. I'm not going to think about this too much. This matchup seems good. Maybe I should have cited out the Regeki Breaks. That card's kind of like aggressive. Yeah, maybe. Oh. 
Let's start with Doom Caliber. I think it's better to spend a Doom Caliber here. Might have been better to go Ancient Gear Beast, but. Alright, negate that, set break, pass the turn. I just think it's better to get the gear beast in when he has no back row, but I don't know if we're going to be able to clear all this back row. I think that might be wishful thinking. So I think we just go Doom Caliber attack. Start getting our chip damage in. One hit from Doom Caliber is awkwardly not enough damage he's probably thinking about spending a card on it he's not going to that means he has cyber dragon and phase dust i will chain and i will discard the ancient gear dragon and target his back row chain book on doom cow okay that's fine So that means he can resolve gear frame now, but if he had gear frame, he would have summoned it last turn. So, don't think he has it. Unless he was playing around pulling the rug. Alright. Compulsory. Once again, we can just Doom Caliber attack this stuff. Trade off the cards. Gate, set compulsory. Next turn I'll go for a big play, although Torrential's not gone, which is kind of an issue for us. I still feel it's correct to go for a big play. Heavy Storm, interesting. A lot of backer removal. All right, so let's activate Gear Town. Normal Ancient Gear Beast. Interval. Attack his set monster. Okay. And pass the turn. Cyber Dragon is annoying, but we've paced ourselves around it. Fortress is annoying. We haven't really paced ourselves around that, unfortunately. I think Fortress is the biggest issue. This, however, is good for us. Enter battle. Do you ever preemptively set Geared Town as Heavy Storm Insurance? Yes, you can do that. That's not a bad play. Set Regeki Break Pass. I don't really want to use this Regeki Break, but I don't think we'll be forced to. More back row. Enter battle. Attack for 2000. Things are just kind of happening. I'm going to keep the compulsory in hand. I might want to discard it. I don't think there's really a reason to set it. He might be like locked up on Avarice and stuff. This deck really beats up on those Ryko decks because of all these. That's a good draw for him. That's just going to work out well. Yeah, that's pretty good. He has a machine. He can pitch some in the fortress and clear the beast. That is annoying. He doesn't have a machine. Okay, well. Now we just win. Enter battle. Attack the gear frame. He drops below 2,000. And we set both our trap cards here because... If one of them resolves, we're likely winning. So we'll go Dust Shoot now. If he has Solemn, he's got a Solemn it. Yep, looks like he's going to Solemn that. And we still have two trap cards we can use to guarantee our Ancient Gear Beast sticks around. So this should be pretty pretty straightforward game. 
And he only has four monsters, so Avarice is just dead. Here comes Fortress. Pitch Fortress. Special. Okay. It's fine. He could Avarice now if he wanted to. We just wait till the battle phase, though. And the Sack for Caius. Target Ancient Gear Beast. That's fine. So that's his normal summon. Pot of Avarice, there it is. Yep. We knew he was probably sitting on that, but that's fine. He needs to hit a machine of force to get anywhere. He's so far behind this game. Like, like he just, yeah, if he doesn't hit a play in those two draws, like he's, he's done. Oh my god, that's a good draw. Thank you, Julian. I appreciate that. I hope you're having a good day. Do the obvious thing first. Gear Town activates. Specials Ancient Gear Dragon. I'll hit the new one. It's most likely to be book. Brain control. Oh, it's Jover. Appreciate that, Zabuma. Yeah, Chalon strikes again, unfortunately. Enter battle. Attack. Compulsory target cars after deck. And that's game. Just replay Gadgeltron attacks. GG's. GG's. Yep, you have Mirror Force, yeah. That's how you play around Mirror Force, ladies and gentlemen. GG's. Ancient Gear. How expensive is this? I love you guys too. You guys are awesome. Honestly, this wouldn't even be a possibility without y'all. Ah, oh, man. Alas, here we are. Doing what we can. I kind of want to look this deck up, see how much it costs. Because I have some of these cards. Not all of them, but some of them. Let's look it up. Let's do a little bit of a TCG player segment. Oh, that sucks. Ancient Gear Beast. Yeah, it's probably very affordable for low rarity, right? Because you don't need the extra deck. Near Mint First Edition is $40. That's kind of a lot. That's kind of a lot for the Ancient Gear Beasts. That's probably the most expensive, right? You have an ulti OCG brain control because it looks better and isn't $200. Honestly, I have some... I have OCG ulti Cyber Dragons and I have OCG ulti Ancient Gear Dragons. So that's why I'm like thinking about building this deck because I can actually... I could make it max rarity in quotation marks. Because I have the ulti gear dragons. And then I forgot the ulti beasts. And then I know there's a Chinese ultimate machine of fortress that just came out. Not that long ago. It's like simplified Chinese ultimate machine of fortress. It's the highest rarity. And it's like really, it's like hard to find. I couldn't find it anywhere. I couldn't even find pictures of it on Google. Like that's how rare it is. Uh, but that'd be... That'd be like technically, you could like ulti out almost this entire monster lineup, except like Doom Cow, Force, and Gear Frame. And then I have ulti Brain. I would get ulti Compulsories, the OCG ones. I have ulti Terraformings. I'd have to get an ultimate Typhoon. 
You think you have this whole deck? I have this whole deck too, but I just don't have it in ulti. Do you have it max rarity, Dylan? Like, do you have ulti first Ancient Gear Beasts? Because that's the card that, like... Like, you could get this deck looking super clean. Drunk says, what happened to the tournament? Uh, Challenge crashed, so... We're re rescheduling till tomorrow. The mods are doing a lot of work to sort through it right now. I'm gonna take a look at what's happening as soon as I'm off stream. And, like, try to help out. Is ulti my favorite rarity? Oh, I actually did this recently. I actually made a rarities tier list. I made a rarities tier list. Should I post it? Should I post my rarities tier list? I think I'm going to get lit up for this, honestly. People on Twitter were mad when I posted my rarities tier list. Hold up. You saw it on Twitter? Not that atrocity again? Oh, no. Okay, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk it through. As a group, you and I, we're going to talk it through. Please. Please. Okay. Okay, hold up. Hold up, guys. Hold up. Look. I need you guys to understand something, okay? Harshmingle says, sorry for the issue today. It's okay, man. It it happens. It happens. All right, this is the rarities tier list. I appreciate your your concern, Hard Sprinkle. The judges are insanely good. Like Angle, Sevilla, Asian with Hat, Hoff, all the people who helped out today are they're literal saints, literal angels. Okay, so let's get into the rarity tier list. S tier, Starfoil. Dual terminal dots, dual terminal shatter foil, and then shatter foil. So this is the S tier. How wrong am I? Be honest. Yeah, exactly, Masterville. When the whole deck is star foil, it looks incredible. I'm gonna show you guys some really cool star foils here in a second. Now that this is kind of a hot take. This is kind of a hot take. You're activated, you're triggered. Art is subjective. Now, some art is objectively bad. But these are the S tiers. My whole deck is Starfoil, Dual Terminal, Shatterfoil. And it does look amazing. Okay? S minus tier. This is, like, not good enough to be considered Starfoil. It's not in the laminated foil tier, but it's, like, close. And it's Pharaoh's Rare. The Pharaoh's Rare looks godly. It looks very good. Okay? This is the S minus tier. Then we get into A tier. And this is where this is where I think people got the most mad. This is where people got the most mad. Because I put Collector's Rare over Ultimate Rare. This is where people got the most mad. But they just don't understand, okay? They just don't understand. I'm going to pull up some sources. I'm going to cite some sources for you guys real quick. Okay, hold on. I'm just going to cite some sources. Hold up, hold up, everybody. Okay. So, source number one. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's go back to the Starfoil thing. Source number one, Starfoil. Check out this. Dude, it's godly. Look how good this looks. This looks so damn clean. The battle pack prize card starfoil judgment dragon it's the rarest judgment dragon in the world it's the rarest judgment dragon in the world 
This Judgment Dragon was only printed as a prize card at YCS's for, si for a very specific side event. It's the rarest Judgment Dragon in the world for the Battle Pack side event at a YCS. And I believe it's Europe only. It looks so fucking clean. It looks godly, dude. This is awesome. The other two JDs, Ultimate and Secret, don't even come close. They don't even come close to this. This is the best looking JD. It's not even close. Okay? It's, I, may, I make the rules. I actually do make the rules. I know I normally say I don't make the rules, but I do make the rules. Okay, so that's my argument for Starfoil, is look how godly this looks. And then, second argument. Lime Slushy says, you like the Starfoils can look like commons until you shift them. Yeah, I like that the Starfoil doesn't mess up the... Do I have a Collectors or a Trooper pick? You DM'd me. Still, it's the best Trooper. I, ha I could pull that up if I want to, but I want to pull up a different example for a Collectors Rare. Someone says Starfoil looks like Turkish Bizarre Bootleg cards. No, it looks like the the high rarity in Dual Links. Dual Links foil card. Someone says you wish Starfoil was just over the art. When a Dual Links foil card happens, this is what it looks like to me. It looks so money. It looks so good. It looks so money. The Starfoil, it, it's easily the best foiling pattern. It reminds me of the OG Pokemon foils, the Cosmos foils, the original foiling pattern on Pokemon cards, like um, Lapras, Fossil, Images. This is just an example. But it reminds me of this foiling pattern, which is the best foiling pattern of all time. And this is like, it's the same vibe, you know? It's the same vibe as this. The original Cosmos foil. Now the Cosmos foil is the best looking. The stars and the other stuff in it, it looks amazing. It's the best. And star foil is the next. Okay, so let me get you the example for the collector's rare. I actually have an image of a card and now, I know that Collector's Rare in America is worse, objectively, but I want to show you an example of a Collector's Rare card from Korea. I want to show you how good Collector's Rare can look. Okay? Look. Look at this. This is what Collector's Rare was intended to be. Look at the different texturing here. Look at the layers of foiling. The OCG Collector's Rare is... It's the best rare. It's better than Ultimate. It's literally better than Ultimate. Look how insanely good this card looks. You have a couple in your shrine? Yeah, dude. You They're like... It's just the best looking rarity. It's like so good. You've got the sparkles over the top of the card. You've got the texture in the background. You've got the specific texture for the lightning flash. You've got the textured edges to make the card really pop out, make the card art pop out. You've got the rainbow sheen to it all. You've got the secret rare name, which is the best naming. This is one of the nicest looking cards I think I've ever seen, like in any card game ever. Like, I know what you guys are saying. I know what you guys are saying. This tier list is cursed, but, like, there literally isn't an ultimate rare that looks this good in the game. Like, there isn't. I don't... I don't care. Like, it just does There's no ultimate rare that looks as good as this card looks. This rarity is peak. Is literally peak. Pharaoh's rare is amazing because it's almost Shatterfoil. It's almost the S tier. Collector's rare is the next best thing. And then you have ultimate rare. Which, the texture on fire sets it off. Dude, I'm saying, dude. The texture on the light, it's crazy. It looks so good. Can we zoom in even further? Let's see. Command Shift Plus. We can. Just look at, whoever designed this card deserves a raise. Like, that's insane. 
This is a cool card, by the way. Lightning Storm. This is a cool card. It's one of the cooler modern Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Okay. Um, what were we talking about? Ultimate Rare. So Ultimate Rare is second. Ultimate Rare is still high A tier. All right, I still placed it above Starlight and Ghost. Let's see if we can get a nice example of the Ultimate Rare. What is one of my all-time favorite Ultimate Rares? Let me see if I can find one. I think it's this. This is one of my favorite Ultimates. I'll see if I can get an image for you guys. And these look, these look very good. Like this card looks very, very good. Hold up, hold up. This is one of my favorite ultimate rares in the game. It's Kawaki Mero Drago. The nice thing about this card is you can see the ringlets. You sent me some OCG collectors rare and ulti for the stream to see. Okay, let me see if I can grab those images real quick. Oh, the Christia one? Yes, that one's godly. Here, I'll, I'll pop these ones out. These are these are another other good examples of the collector's rare. Hold up, where were we? A bit messy. Yeah. I think I like Okay, this is another OCG collector's rare. This is the collector's rare sw uh, swap frog. This looks pretty good. It doesn't look as good as the lightning storm cuz the monster isn't foil, but it does look very good. Thank you to enraged peacock for sending me this image. It does look very good. It looks better than the ulti. It looks better than the ulti in in English by far. But yeah, where were we? Oh yeah. So the Kwaki Mara Drago, it does look it does look messy. That's the thing. The issue with ultimates is you have one of two options. Either the either the the full card is foiled out and it looks messy. This is my biggest gripe with ultimate. Or the monster in the card, like for example, if we look at if we look at Alubear, the ultimate rare Alubear, this is the the alternative to. You see how the only part of the card that's ultimate is the art behind him, so you get two issues with ultimate. You either get you don't get the lovely texturing on the art like this, and the balance of the different types of foiling that collector's rare gets. You either get the whole card is foiling like this. And it looks kind of messy. It still looks good. Don't get me wrong. This is one of my favorite ultimate rares. It looks very good. Or you get this one where it's like the card itself, like the monster itself isn't ulti. Ulti, Vayu, JD, and Dad look muddled. Yeah, they do. They're not as clean cut as the collect as a collector's rare could be. You like the messiness of the old ultis? I do too. I think it looks raw. I think it reminds me of like early Yu-Gi-Oh just saying, fuck it, make the whole thing foil. And then just absolutely snapping with the textures. Like, let's take a look at some of these textures. So if you look at the neck around Kawaki Mara Drago, look at these spheres. The way they use the spheres to define the texture in the original ultis is so cool. Like, the way they, they created the texture is so unique. Like, it's such a unique way to create the texture. Because it's just, like, layers of different spheres. And I think in the old ultis, it looks way better than in the newer ones, which are here. The newer ones still have that same sphere cut, but the print is not as defined. And you can see the lines even are a little bit longer and straighter. And so the, the ulti is, looks a little bit sharper. It looks like someone increased the sharpness of the image. And the foil stamp, is, is it has more lines and less spheres. And I think the spheres and the spherical nature of the old ultis looks way better than the new ultis. So I think the new ultimates are much worse. Uh, but back to the tier list, wherever the fuck that was. Let's close out some of these. So we've seen the ultimates. We've seen the collector's rare. The collector's rare is like, when you see a card like this, you're like, okay, I get it. Like, this is what it was meant to look like. You know what I mean? So collector's rare is number one. Ultimate rare is number two. Starlight rare is number three. 
So let's talk about one of my favorite Starlight Rares, which is Effect Veiler. I think this is one of the nicest looking Starlight Rares. It looks gorgeous. Let's see, open image and new tab. Let's see if we can zoom in on this. It just, it's sparkly. <laughs> it's like Hobby League, but even more sparkly and like done right. This one is just like very like, it just pops, it's bright. The silver on the orange background doesn't look great, but there, there really is nothing like opening a Starlight Rare in a booster pack, I'm assuming. I've never opened a Starlight Rare in a booster pack, but I imagine if you opened a Starlight Rare in a booster pack, the high would be insane. Like, I feel like just the high of opening one in a booster pack would hit, like, really, really hard. Especially if it's a cool card like Effect Veiler. You like Ulti Veiler? I like Ulti Veiler too. But this is an example of, like, a really nice looking Starlight. Let me see if I can find a better Starlight. Starlight Rare Stardust Dragon. Now, Stardust kind of got did dirty because it was reprinted as a... The 25th anniversary but i do believe the starlight rare ocg one let's take a look at this again again most of these are if we're rating oh shit this is not what i wanted open image and new tab there we go tell me that doesn't look fucking insane like tell me that isn't the cleanest motherfucking stardust dragon you've ever seen look at that beauty dude look at that beauty what is this graded? A gem mint 10? <laughs> Look at this card. This card was designed to activate our senses. It was designed to activate everything in my brain that is supposed to activate. You feel me? This is an incredible looking card. This is why Starlight is number three and then we have ghost rare which i think the best looking one is probably honest also starlight appaloosa is another really amazing looking card ghost rare honest is probably the best looking ghost rare yeah this card looks amazing So I think it goes Starlight and then Ghost. You just picked up Ultra Italian Honests and they're pretty nice. That's tight. The foreign ones look nice. The Euro print cards in general look pretty nice. But the the Ghost Honest looks good. So we've got for the rarity tier list, it goes Collector's Rare, then Ultimate Rare, then Starlight Rare, then Ghost Rare, in my opinion. Where was the Collector's Rare? So we got this guy, this is number one for me. And then number two is ulti. Oh, number one is starfoil. So this is number one for me. This is number two, the collector's rare. Pharaoh's rare is in between. And then the stardust dragon. This is number four, I believe, or number five. Starlight rare. These look very good. And then ghost honest. The ghost cards are four. So that's that rounds out my S and A tier. I think if you can get a card in any of these rarities then it's worth getting it like i feel like i would buy any card in starfoil or i would buy any card in pharaoh's rare or collectors or ultimate or starlight or ghost these are the these are the rarities i would aim for that's what i would aim for are are these top nine these in my opinion are the top nine rarities if i can't get it in these top nine rarities i'm reluctant to even buy the card usually because the card isn't going to look as good Unless, of course, it might be in the B tier. So we let's move on to the B tier. B tier number one is Secret Rare. Now, Secret Rare is for the day ones. Because Secret Rare was the original Chase Rarity. Secret Rare, and the best looking Secret Rare, in my opinion, is Chaos Emperor Dragon Envoy of the End. This is the best looking Secret Rare. It just looks very nice. This is a bad image. This is also a bad image, but it's a little bit better. This is the card you pull it in a booster pack as a kid, and you're like, wow, <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh is sick. <laughs> you're like, god damn, this is, this is awesome. 
<laughs> and you just like fucking lose your shit. So this is why Secret Rare is the top of B tier for me. Yada Garasu, exactly. Let's pull up a Yada Garasu. Yada Garasu. Is it Yada Garasu or Yada Garasu? A secret. Let's take a look at this. This is one of the nicest looking cards ever printed. One of the most beautiful cards. Not only is the Secret Rare Foiling gorgeous on this card, but the artwork on this card is one of my favorite card arts. I think it's in my top 10 favorite card arts. I have a First Dead Secret Yada as well. It's like one of the cards I absolutely had to collect. It's one of my favorite cards that I own. So this is like very gorgeous. This is why Secret Rare is like, and Secret Rare for the old heads, like if you played back in the day, like if you played in like 2003, 2004, you know what it's like opening one of those Secret Rares. You know what it's like, like seeing a secret rare in someone's binder as a kid. It was different back then. This was before the ghost rares, before the ulties, before everything else. When you saw a secret rare, you were like, fuck. Because there just wasn't secret rares like that. This is before even the tins. This is before the tins had reprints in secret rares. Old supers and ultras hit different. Yeah, when you're like those early, the DM era supers and ultras, when you open them, you felt like a god. I remember opening a Sui Jin in a pack and I was like, I'm the best duelist to ever do it. You lost the Yada, you think someone stole it. Dude, back then everyone was stealing shit. You pulled an Injection Fairy Lily and wept. That's based. That's truly based. Like, I I know that feeling, JDZ. I know that feeling. I feel like the only thing that comes close to that feeling nowadays is pulling a Starlight. Like, I, if I opened this card in a booster pack, I would cry. I would genuinely cry. This is like one of the prettiest cards like that you could open nowadays. I feel like this is the modern day equivalent of opening a secret rare Yadagarasu. Is pulling something like a Starlight Stardust Dragon. That would feel like there would be nothing like that, of course. So that's why we got secret rares at the top of B tier. Gold Series 1 and 2 are the top, uh, the second place. So let's talk about Gold Series 1 and 2. Gold Series Dark Arm Dragon. I feel like this is a pretty good example of it. Uh, back when Dark Arm Dragon was only a secret rare, it was impossible to find. The first reprint of it was the Gold 2 Dark Arm Dragon. And this was the first time that Dark Arm Dragon became widely accessible as a card. Prior to it, it was incredibly expensive. Um, and then when this was reprinted, it was like $45, $50 upon reprint. And so pulling one of these in a Gold Series pack still hits very, very different. Gold Crush Card Virus also slaps. I agree. That's the other one that... Gold Sark, Dark Armed, and Crush Card Virus. Dad was 300 before this printing. And then this printing came out, and it was like the first time you could pull a Dark Arm Dragon functionally. And Gold 1 and 2 really, really did it up. So that's why I have it as B tier, second place B, or T B tier. It's just under secret for me. There really is nothing like pulling a Dark Armed or a Gold Sark from one of those gold packs. It's like one of the best feelings. Ultra Super pre-2011, which is below the Gold Series. Let's take a look at the first Ultra I pulled in Raging Battle. Power Tool Dragon Ultra first. This was the first Ultra Rare I pulled. It was the first Synchro Monster I ever saw. So I have a funny story. I'll give you guys a story. So I had quit Yu-Gi-Oh! after my deck got stolen when I was a kid. I played at Shonen Jump. Las Vegas. Where's the Ultra first? I guess this is the the picture we have, I guess. TCG player. All right. Tournament pack decree was... And opening this card was really hype. Because it was the first time I'd ever seen like a white card before. I was like, what the fuck? This is crazy. And it was also old, oh, an old Ultra, so it looked very good. Um, I was like learning how to drive when I was in high school and I was like, I have nowhere to go cause I'm dead ass in high school and I have nothing to do. And I was like teaching myself how to drive. So I would like basically just drive to target and just like look at shit in target. And one day I was like looking at Yu-Gi-Oh packs. And I was like, I should get back into Yu-Gi-Oh. And this was in 2009, I believe, or 2008. And I bought a raging battle booster pack. I bought one pack and I cracked a power tool dragon. And I'm telling you guys right now, if I cracked anything but a power tool dragon, 
if I cracked any other card in Raging Battle, we would not be sitting here today playing Edison format. Like, this would not have started... But the second I saw the Power Tool Dragon in the booster pack, I was like, this is fucking awesome. And I was just like, high schooler, I was probably like 15, 14 or 15. And I like saw this card and I was just like, this is so sick. Yu-Gi-Oh got way cooler. And I like got back into it. And I started talking to people at my high school who played it. And um, yeah, I, I'm friends with a lot of those guys still today, which is awesome. So uh, that's why I got this super highly on my, I've got the old ultras and supers pre-2011 ranked very highly. Now, pulling a super in 2011 just feels bad. Like, opening an Insector Hornet in a booster pack made me want to punch someone. They'll be lower, don't worry. Duelist League rares, I am very fond of these because they were given out as prizes for topping vocals. And when I was in high school, after, you know, like shortly after me opening this Power Tool Dragon and getting back into Yu-Gi-Oh, um, I would go to locals. And getting a Duelist League rare felt really good because it felt like you actually, like, earned like a really cool promo that was really sick uh i have no real examples of these but they all look good and then silver name rare i remember the very first Yu-Gi-Oh booster pack i ever opened was metal raiders i opened a metal raiders booster pack and i opened a masked sorcerer first edition metal raiders i opened this card which to this day where the fuck is the image? Here's the image. Is one of my favorite cards. Just because it was the very first card I opened in a booster pack. Mask Sorcerer. And the silver name rare just still hits. It still hits. You were super happy as a kid to like, you'd be flicking through the cards and then you see the rare and you're just like, that's sick. And it was sick because every card back then was new like you didn't know it was like a surprise what sort of monster you were going to get there was no internet to like look it up and figure out what was in the set like it was just like like we didn't even know what cards were in metal raiders like we were just like there could be this card in metal raiders it was the very first booster pack i ever opened i had the yugi kaiba starter deck i think i had the yugi starter deck my cousin had the kaiba one and we would play against each other and then the very first booster pack I ever got was Metal Raiders, and I opened a Mass Sorcerer. You remember the magazines that had the set list? Dude, my favorite magazine as a kid, I still have it, has the Legacy of Darkness set list in it. And it was the sickest thing, because you, I would just go through and just be like, oh, that card is insane, and it was like Tyrant Dragon. And I was just like, this is so sick. Those magazines were hella chase, dude. They're hella chase. They were super cool. So I have Silver Name Rare very high. Just because of that feeling, there's really nothing like that. We'll never go back to something like that ever again because the internet kind of ruined it. There'll never be that that true surprise. There's never going to be that true like er era of surprise of not knowing what's in a booster pack and opening it. Reminds you of being a kid playing new Pokemon games before everything got spoiled online. Exactly. That surprise. I'm talking about the surprise of those things. We'll never have that surprise feeling ever again, and that makes me very sad. Uh, so that's why Silver Name Rare rounds out the B, B tier. I think anything from S to B is, like, dope. Getting into C tier, this is just, like, I'll play it if I have to. You know what I mean? Like, C tier, common on common. Dimensional Alchemist, it doesn't have a nicer printing, so I'll play the common ones. Whatever. That's why I got the Beckett magazines. Yeah, those were crazy cool. Like when we were kids. Okay, now we're, we're skipping some tiers. We're skipping D tier and E tier. We're going straight to F tier. Because these are the cards that I would rather just not play the game if I had to play these. Like if I had to use this rarity, I would rather not play the game. We've got the Ultra Super post-2011. All look terrible. Gold Secret. Thankfully, there are not that many Edison cards that are Gold Secret. Gold Series 3+. plus, Disgusting. Premium Gold. Ew. Quarter Century. I'm feeling nauseous. Platinum rare, I'm throwing up. That's it. I cannot play with any of these rarities. Everything above this, I can play with and be okay with it. Everything below this, though, in the F tier, I would rather just play a different game at this point. Platinum is the most atrocious thing that you've ever seen. Let, let's just look at this. Platinum rare, honest. It comes platinum rare, right? It is the ugliest fucking thing I've ever seen. Okay, first off, what the fuck is up with the name? 
You can't even read it. There, the foil is like the opposite of reflective. It looks worse in the light. <laughs> like this is a card that looks worse the more lighting you put on it. That's how that's how bad this rarity is. It looks so ugly. It literally looks like someone like rubbed the card on charcoal. Why not just make it gold but silver? Why not just not make a new rarity like this? You ever place it of platinum rare D prisons? They're not too bad. I am sorry to hear that. The super rare D prisons are the master race. You don't mind these? These look terrible. They have the worst name. They have the worst foiling. They have the worst text. They have the worst fucking everything. Layout. Card layout. This is the worst of every Yu-Gi-Oh card ever printed. Are the platinum rares. People who like platinum and all dark stratos deserve to be imprisoned. I agree. Rage Peacock. I agree. You own two honest in gold secret rare. I don't know what that is. This is like, I would shame someone if they use this against me. I'd be like, what are you doing? What is the backside of the tier list for max gold? Max gold is in the premium gold. It's in the bottom tier. It's in F tier. I think premium gold is F is yeah it's the almost the second worst. Yeah, this is the worst rarity. The platinum rare is by far the worst rarity. Like it has the worst naming, it has the worst everything. It, this art honest doesn't get its effect. Yep. Yeah, this foiling is just a vanilla 1100. It doesn't actually have a defense stat. It has zero defense too, so it's a completely useless card. So yeah, that's the rarity. That's the rarity tier list. All right. Now, what's your rarity tier list? What's everybody's favorite rarity? Why do I dislike the 25th century rares? Oh, that's a good question. I'll show you. Quarter century rare, secret rare. Images. I'll show you right now. Look at this. Where's the fucking name of the card? You can't read the name of the card. You can't read the name of the card. The name of the card is blurred because of the text. It is the worst name text. It's like they they took a rarity. So the worst part about the 25th century is they took a rarity that already exists, Starlight Rare, and they just made it worse. They didn't do anything new. They didn't do anything new except for making it worse. You said Dark Arm looks amazing in Quarter Century Rare? No, it doesn't, because you can't read the name. Uh, Dark Arm 25th Century. What is it? Quarter Century. Let's see. You can't read the name. I hate it. Look at this. Look at the name. What the fuck? I can't even read the name of the card. It's so frustrating. It, it's like an ugly Starlight. It's like Starlight, but worse. It's like, why not just make the name something, make the name gold or make the name silver or make the name like blue or something. Let me show you, let me show you exa exactly what I'm talking about. I've had a dragon quarter century. Five headed dragon Yu-Gi-Oh OCG prismatic. Where is it? No, that's not it. Twentieth anniversary. Here it is. Okay, look at this. Look at this. This is what this is what Japan got versus what we got. Uh, let me find a better image. It's a bad image. Is there a good image of this card anywhere? Japan got red. They got red names. That's fire, dude. They got red names. What did we get? Premium gold unreadable garbage. Also, Japan got this fire watermark that says 20th century on it. It's so cool. When you see it in person, it looks so good. Um... 
But it's like they just took a rarity that already existed and made it worse. They didn't do anything new. Look at this. Here you go. You can see the name better here. This is like a perfect... Let me just see. Look at that name, dude. It's so clean. Why did we not get that? Yeah, I've seen the OCG Ultimate Red Eyes Darkness Battle Dragon. It looks amazing. We have the 25th watermark. Yeah, just... It's not the same. It's not the same. Why did we not get the red name? You know? I don't get it. I don't get it. So that's why I rated it so low. I rated it so low because they had the formula. They had the bag and then they fumbled it. They fumbled it. They just give us the ugly name. Like if you look at Stardust, Dragon, Quarter, Century, Rare, Images, Dude, look at the name. It's just not, it's not there. Oh, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating because the name of the card is so important. You know what I mean? Like, it's so important. Look at this. Even the gold one, you can read the name. Damn. That is so frust. It's so frustrating because it was so close to being fire. It was so close to being based. Alas. So that's why it's ranked second to last. It's not ranked second to last because it's objectively bad. I don't think it's that bad. Like, if Starlight Rare didn't exist, it wouldn't be that bad. But the fact of the matter is, we have an objectively better version of the rarity. And they just, like, took it and made it worse. Ulti Stardust looks fire. Yeah, it does look fire, but it's a little bit blurry. Dude, the Starfoil JD. This is, like... This would make such a cool addition to my binder. I need to get these one day. They're quite expensive. I think they're like $100 each. They're really, really pricey. It's the most rare JD. The lightning storm is lit. The Stardust looks good. Honest looks good. Chaos Emperor looks good. Yadagrasu. Even the gold dark arm, you know? It's looking good. Power tool. The ultra. See, all of these cards look good. And then you get to the quarter century rare and you're like, bro, come on. Binder collection reveal when? Soon. Actually, Johnny, I ordered a binder. I didn't own a binder. So I'm going to do a collection. I'm going to do a collection post very, very soon. Within a month, whenever my binder gets here. So I ordered a binder. This is not a sponsorship. I ordered a couple different types of binders. I'll show you guys the binders I ordered. Hold up. I'm gonna close all these tabs. Close all these tabs. Okay. Um. I ordered a Vault X binder. Has anyone used these before? Has anyone used these before? A Vault-X binder. I've heard they're pretty good. Let's see the US store. What do they have at the US store? Binder vid would be sick. I'm going to do a binder vid for sure. But I've got to get the binder first. <laughs> I don't have the binder. Let's see the card binders. Has anyone used one of these before? So unfortunately, the best... The best looking ones are the pink and the purple ones, and they're sold out, but I was able to find a purple one online. And so I ordered a purple one online, which I'm gonna use for the binder video. And it, I like the color on it a lot. What was I using to store cards before the binder video? Suchi T, bro. 
deck boxes. <laughs> I just have shitloads of deck boxes of cards and like fucking bins. <laughs> Literally just bins. <laughs> I mean, I don't have too many cards, so it's not that big of a deal. But it was just like, it got to the point where it's like, I'm either going to have too many deck boxes, it's going to be a pain in the ass to sort through, or, you know. Do I know of any binders that have an inner pocket to hold extra sleeves and stuff? I don't think so. I don't know of any. I heard the Dragon Shield Codex one is good too. This one. I've heard this is one of the best binders you can get. There's a zip zip codex. I think this is the best one. So I was thinking about getting a, a one of those and then like comparing it with this vault X one. But it doesn't really matter because the vault X one is like sold out anyway. So you can't buy it. <laughs> it's just fucking sold out everywhere. The only one you can get is like this white one. Which the white one looks okay, but it doesn't look as good as the pink and the purple. The pink one looks the best, but I couldn't find it anywhere. The purple one looks really good. These colors look very good on a binder. Ultimate guard zip binders are great. I had an ultimate guard. No, I didn't have an ultimate guard. My nephew has an ultimate guard zip binder for his Pokemon cards, and I didn't like it. I actually didn't like it. I was like, uh, I was not a fan. Let's take a look at it though. Ultimate Guard Xeno Skin. This sounds like an alien. So one thing I didn't like about it is like when you open the binder and the binder's full, you know how there's like tenting in the middle where like the pages fold upwards? I didn't like that in the, the Ultimate Guard one. Whereas I noticed some of the people on the edisonformat.com discord were saying that the vault binders never tent, even when the binder is full. So that's why I went with them. And I've also heard the, the card codex never tents from Dragon Shield as well. So that's how I was like, hmm. I basically just don't want to get one that tents here. I'm not really sure if there's a binder tent. If there's an image. Basically, like when, when the pages are uh, full card binder. God damn it. It's like when it's full, and you know, like that area on the sleeves. Fucking shit, dude. This is super annoying. The pages like fold up in between the crease because the binder is so full. I don't know if I'm making any sense. You guys know what I'm talking about, though. I'd have to like go get a binder and show you guys, but I'll show you what I'm talking about when I eventually get it. So, yeah, I want to do a binder reveal. Ultimate Guard Binder does that to an extent, but it's not to where it bothered you. Yeah, it, it was enough to bother me. It was enough where I was like, okay, I don't really want to fuck with this. You've been happy with Dex Protection Binder since like 2016. I did not like, I, I have a Dex deck box and I didn't like it. I actually really hated my Dex deck box. It was like, it's my least favorite deck box to the point where I don't even use it anymore. Um... It might have just been the one that I got was like an older model or something like that. Uh, but I really did not like it. My favorite deck box that I have right now is actually the Celebi deck box. Pokemon Center. This one. This is my favorite one. But it doesn't fit the sideboard and extra deck, unfortunately. But it's my favorite deck box. This one's also really cool but this is my favorite one that i have it's super tight on all of the sides it has different artwork and on the on the the deck dividers it has different artwork too it's really really sick that's probably my favorite i really like the exclusive like pokemon center deck boxes they look really good they look super cool um but the ones i'm like I lost my train of thought. The ones I used the most, I used, it was like a Magic the Gathering one. I used Magic the Gathering deck boxes, basically. The one that looks like Pikachu is awesome. Yeah, I was going to order one of those. The, the plush deck box. 
They seem like a nightmare logistically, but just for having for a collection, they're kind of cool. That'd be kind of cool. I think at the end of the day, I like collecting the game and I like playing the game. But I'm not sure which I like more. Because I really like collecting the game. Playing the game is fun, though. Like, if you couldn't play the game, I wouldn't like collecting it as much. I think it would get boring. I was actually talking, I had a really interesting conversation with my brother-in-law, who's a manager at Prada. He was talking about how, like, in fashion, like, high-end, like, retail fashion, not, like, high-end vintage fashion or high-end custom fashion, but in, like, high-end retail fashion, like, Gucci or um, Nike, like, custom shoes or whatever, or, like, exclusive shoes or whatever, what is it that sells this product? What is it that gives this product value beyond its intrinsic value of what it was paid to make? Because ultimately, like, if you get, let's say you get, like, a Gucci sandals or something. Like, Gucci sandals, like, they cost a lot of money, right? How m are they worth it? They're pretty comfortable, but they're not. Let's be real. They're not worth it. How much are they? How much is Gucci sandals? Gucci sandals cost four hundred to four hundred fifty dollars for fucking sandals. You know what I mean? But you're paying for more than that. There's like a couple things that you pay for that's is more than that, right? And the same thing is true for for card games. Yeah, the Kanye fifty dollar plain white tee. Exactly. Yeah, the same thing is true for card games, right? The same thing is true. Even if you're buying a low rarity card, you're still paying more than what the card is worth. Because cards are essentially garbage. Like they're they are repackaged garbage. Like you could make you could make a trading card game out of a hundred percent recycled garbage and sell it for a lot of money. Do you get know what I'm saying? Like essentially card games are not anything that has value. One person's trash functionally. So what is it that gives these cards value, right? And he was saying that one of the biggest things that gives something value and that creates the highest demand products is stories. And I think that that, that is part of the reason why my tier list is the way it is, is because these cards in this order create the best stories, if that makes sense. Like... The reason I have Secret Rare here instead of like, I don't know, something else. Or the reason I have Starfoil here is because Starfoil, du Dual Terminal, Shatterfoil, they can create the best stories. You know what I mean? You can play the Dual Terminal video game, which is like you had to go to a certain place and probably hang around a bunch of people. Maybe you met someone at that place. You were forced to interact with people to get Starfoils. You know what I mean? You were forced to draft the battle pack and then win a tournament to get a Starfoil judgment dragon so the story of the card gives it intrinsic value and that's why cards like dark magician like and blue eyes white dragon that's why they're worth more because they have the story backing it they don't have they don't have any intrinsic value when compared a to b with another card like red eyes darkness metal like if we're going to compare something like caius the shadow monarch to blue eyes white dragon one of these cards sees a ton more play right? One of these cards has a lot more actual applicable value when it comes to playing the actual game, but Blue Eyes White Dragon has the story, you know? Exactly, Benny makes a good point. Ford Mustang, it's the same thing. It's like, yeah, it's basically that. Glassip says you politely disagree. What do you disagree with? I don't know. What is it that you're disagreeing with? Like, outside of actual use with a card, like, outside of actual, like, I need this card for a tournament, does it function for that tournament? The only intrinsic value for a card is stories. There's no other intrinsic value beyond function. Stories, memories. It's like you're buying a piece of history, you're buying a piece of, like, human memory. You're buying a piece of the human experience.
or your own human experience, you know? And that sort of thing can have a certain certain price tag or certain not price tag. And then there's also the flex factor. So there's two, there's that, I guess, where it's like, you just have to have the nicest stuff because you want to flex on people when you're playing. It's like a flex factor, but that's like almost a competitive thing. Again, if you're not going to use the card in a deck, there's really no reason to own nice cards um, outside of stories or just like, I don't know. It's like, why do we collect things? Why do we collect things? For example, in addition to the in instinctive predilection previously discussed, the most common reason people collect things include knowledge and learning. So like stories, basically. Relaxation and stress reduction, personal pleasure, including appreciation of beauty and pride of ownership. How do you put a dollar value on these things? You know what I mean? Benny says, how long is a season in Edison? A year. That's how long it is. The season's almost over. Today would have been really sick if we had that tournament, man. I'm so bummed. A Gucci belt is better than a regular belt because of the flex. Yes and no. Because sometimes people see, oh, he's wearing Gucci. That means he's not smart with his money. And if you actually have money, you're not wearing Gucci. If that makes sense. Firing an 8-man in the Discord. They've been firing him. I don't really want to play anymore. I'm kind of over it. I think I'm going to end stream. Yeah, I'm going to end stream. I'll see you guys next time. I'm super sorry about today. It's been a blast. Peace out.